Good evening, party people, and welcome back to the bar with an X. My name is Cameron, and welcome to Trivia Night. With context, before stream started, I was looking for the happies. So I went onto the TikTok, watched a spicy mustache video about regrowing plants that you find from the store, and here I am, with a smile on my face. Been a bit of a rough week this far. So you'd think, with a rough week, that means it's time for drinks, right? Well, you're right, absolutely. But alas, I'm one who likes to keep my body and my mind at a higher level than normal. And if we're consuming alcohol, the body's at a low level. So that means that we really have to do some brain teasers this time around. I've never done trivia before on a bar stream, but I figured it was time to test my knowledge. A while ago, I went to the thrift store with my dearest, and it was a while ago because I haven't been to the thrift store in quite a while. And I found this box called Mixed Drink Smarts Get in the Mix. And it looks a little something like this. This is what the, what the box looks like. I found it at the store. I saw like little martini glasses and stuff on it. I was like, what could this possibly be? And it's, a, it's an entire box just about learning about mixed drinks and various different pieces of their quality. For example, there are, oh, actually, well, well illustrated for you. There are four different types of, I guess, question cards in this book, little trivia cards. And I'll set up my angle so that we can all get a look at what it is that I'm talking about over here. Well, this works out quite well. I love having this other angle. It is so convenient. Also, uh, I hope everyone can hear me okay, uh, because I decided to use my lavalier microphone this time around. This is upside down, so I need to turn this around. I need to turn you all the way around so that things aren't upside down, right? Right, that's how that works? Maybe? Maybe? No? No? Well, I will figure this out. <laughs> First time I've done something like this. Let's see if I turn it around like this. There we go. Straight up angle from above. And I will just kind of move things over here a little bit. I don't plan on using the little, little, little bar rubber very much this time around. But we've got a couple of different cards that come in this packet. I have literally have no idea how much this thing costs. I think I picked it up for like a single dollar. Or maybe I, I think I got it from the thrift store. It's got four different, oh, four different sections. We have drinks, which are orange. Ingredients, which are like an, a, a greenish color. Lingo, which is... The purple i'm trying to get it out of here i realized there was a little tab in here to actually pull things out and i didn't actually utilize it and uh, then we got the wild cards history culture and miscellaneous facts i don't know i thought of it this way i was planning on something else this week and uh, i really didn't get around to it because it was just a lot of planning and it's okay we got plenty of things that we can do around here and such i thought you know what i actually it was anna who was poking through my cabinets and i was and i noticed the little box fall out and i was like you know what i bet there are probably some cocktail recipes in here so that's what we're on the search for on the search in these deck of cards for something that resembles a drink something that we can make for ourselves assuming that we don't necessarily find one right off the bat i think the best way to start things off is with whatever your favorite drink is you can mix it right now if you'd like to i'm going to mix mine which happens to be at least now negroni so I will make myself a very quick Negroni before we go into this and we start doing trivia this evening. Feel free to participate if you'd like to. I've seen some really, really cool stuff done out there of being able to integrate like trivia and quizzes and stuff like that into like chat itself. I haven't done any of that setup. Maybe that's cool. If we want to do that, like we can definitely try for it. But let me real quick get myself a little something, a little piece of ice in here. There are many ways to Negroni. I think my favorite way of Negroniing is uh, just putting a glass, putting a just, just putting a nice cube in a glass. It's a, it's quick and simple. Mix your ingredients together. It's, it's so easy. It's so easy to do. I'll put the, I'll put things over here. Rightfully so. That's how it should be. Mojo Jojo, I know y'all miss me. What's going on there, Yummy Taco, aka the Mojoists of Jojoists? How are you? I haven't, I haven't seen you here in quite a while. But that's okay. It's, it's bar scene. You come back whenever you feel like it. But it's good to see you back. And it's good to see that you've, uh, you've enlightened yourself. You've come up to this enlightened level of realizing that you are indeed a yummy taco. Not sure exactly what the taco piece means there, but yummy is something I think is uh, something we can all understand. So naturally, in order to make your Negroni, it's actually quite easy. You just take equal parts Campari, sweet vermouth, and your favorite gin and put them in a glass. Actually, I'm not going to do the Negroni. This time I'm going to do a Boulevardier because I have a lot more whiskey than I do any other things. And uh, I'm kind of running low on gin. And uh, I, don't, I don't really want to, <laughs> you know, I don't want to run out of the good stuff. Yummy taco, I've been working, I'm a BHA, I'm a BHA, lol. It's a BHA, a bar, bar, bar something? I think, if I recall, I believe I met you in a liquor store once upon a time, if I'm correct in saying. I don't know what a BHA is off the top of my head. Please enlighten me, I need it. I'm going for my sweet vermouth now. Um, 
Oh, y'all might actually notice that you can actually hear me when I'm off camera now. My microphone is here on my lapel this time. I've had this lavalier microphone for actually quite a while. I got it for Christmas and I never quite got it to a level where I liked the way that it sound. But I did a little bit of equalizing before stream started. I learned how to use the equalizer. It's a very, it's very, very useful. Very useful to make things kind of, because I had noticed it sounded a little like, almost like I was underwater. And apparently with a three band equalizer filter in OBS, it is made easy. You can make things sound better. And that's something I think I want to play around with with all of my microphones because I just I just don't like the idea of replacing one microphone and completely never using it again. So for this Boulevardier, I think I'm going to go for a Larceny this time, a Larceny small batch. When I last tried this, I think a few streams ago, I had it was a very, very corn forward taste to me. And I kind of want to see how that gels with the, uh, with the Antica vermouth as well as the uh, Campari that we got in there. I was actually recollecting to a buddy of mine today why I really like uh, Negroni. At first it was because I started drinking them because it's just simple and easy. Um, I also like gin, but I think I'm actually liking the Boulevardiers more than the Negronis now when I think of it. Um, other than that, it's just kind of it's, it's just kind of easy. It's easy to make. And I realize that now that I've drank so much of them now, certainly not more than a lot of other people, but they're really, really starting to taste a lot more sweet to me now than they did previously. Like at first the Campari really, I knew it was like a bitter orange um, and I got the bitterness, but as you keep on, as you, as you keep on doing things that you love, you eventually uh, start to focus on the finer things, the more nuances of it all. And this is my, this is my Negroni. That's why we start things off with trivia. It's just grab yourself a drink, pour yourself a beer, pull up a chair, maybe some water. Perhaps you're non-alcoholic. It's good. Just drink what you like. Hmm. All right, actually, that's, that's not too bad. I think with the larceny, it's a little, it's a little lost on me. I think the, the really corn forwardness, I can really taste kind of like the corn hair in there. It's a little, I don't know, it's different. I actually kind of like that. It really does kind of taste like uh, corn on the, uh, on the aftertaste there, as opposed to the more like, I guess, more bitter, bitter forward botanical notes as some other, uh, as some other like gins and stuff like that. But in any case, let's get things started with some trivia over here, I see. I'll admit, I'll admit, this is a lot less involved than these usual, usual streams are, but I figured I'd try something new a little bit. So now, I'm gonna ask yourselves, which, which category do we pick from? We, in total, have four different selections. We have our drinks, our ingredients, our lingo, or a wild card. And I think, I watched the D&D movie this weekend, so my mind is currently on D20s, tabletops, and otherwise. So I'm just gonna go grab my, di my dice bag real quick. And we're just going to roll to see what section we take it from. Because that just seems... <laughs> Might as well let the roll of the die do the talking. So evidently, each of these I think are either open-ended or multiple choice questions. And we're just going to... I'm, I'm very curious to see like whether or not I can even uh, pull something good like this off. With my dice bag. Crown Royal bag. Let's see, uh, there's got to be at least... Got to be at least one D4 in here to use. Let me just like... This is a huge, this is a huge bag. There's so many dice in here. Let's see. There's gotta be one of them. Where is our die at? Oh, there's one. That's a nice one. And uh, I don't see any more. So we'll take that one. Four different, four different sides, four different things. Uh, don't put that die back in the bag. That'd be, that would be silly. At some point in time, I wanna be able to, I wanna try some uh, uh, tabletop game streaming. And so these dice will absolutely be making an appearance. That in the dice bag. Oh, there's another one there. I guess we can switch between the two. That makes sense to me. I like that. I was also meaning to think about maybe like setting up a, if this thing is popping, if this thing is a, uh, if this works out well, we can set up a Discord bot for this. It'd be fun. A bunch of random questions. Y'all can quiz yourselves anytime that you want to. In any case, we have this conveniently placed die rolling box here. There's a little book on the inside. I just noticed there's a little tips guide in here. I'm not sponsored by these guys at all. Oh, there's a scorecard. Ooh. Oh my God, I got a pen back here. Do I got a pen back here? I got a Sharpie. He's a sharpie. Oh my god, it can totally keep score. All right. Cameron. I keep my own score over here. And um, how am I supposed to do this? There are a couple of different scoring options. How do we do this? The winner is the first to answer three questions correctly. I plan on doing many more than three questions. Players select which category they want to tackle at any point during the game until they have three correct. Nah, I'm letting the die roll that. Square option two. The winner is the first to get a total of 12 correct answers. Shuffle the cards so players answer questions in all the categories. Ah, I see. I can shuffle them all up if I want to. Well, the roll of the die is what decides it. 
So uh, I guess we'll see how long it takes for me to get to 12 correct answers because that seems to be the win con of the game. So we'll uh, we'll give that a try. I'll take this off to the side and keep my scorecard on the on the ready. Right now, zero correct answers, and I got this beautiful die box to roll things with. We'll say that. We'll put it in that order. Drinks are one, ingredients are two, lingos are three, wild card is four. Let's go for that. It's a three, so we get a lingo question, evidently. I have all my piles conveniently placed over here, and I'll put them back in the view, these beautiful columns. Well, I guess I'll just put the main question over here. So the first question, actually, I've been looking at that one for a while, so I'll take it from the next stop here. The first question pertains to top shelf liquor. Top shelf liquor is A, from Top Shelf, Scotland, which is evidently a place in Scotland, according to this card at least. The bar's most expensive, B. The bar's cheapest, C. Or D, house made. I'm inclined to think that Top Shelf spirits are the, one that, the ones that are most expensive. I also think of this in terms of, I feel like if you're going to a bar and you put the Top Shelf stuff up on top, it's gotta be the most expensive. Otherwise, every single bar grab that you go for, every single bottle grab that you go for, is gonna be a really expensive one. If they're gonna make the bartender go all the way to the top, then they better be uh, paying a pretty penny for whatever you're, you know, whatever spirit you're going for. So my answer is gonna be B. That seems like an easy one. B, the bar's most expensive. That is correct. Nice job, Cam. Top shelf is bartender lingo for the most expensive premium brands of alcohol that a bar carries. Conversely, well drinks, the bottom, use the cheapest stuff. These terms came about because of where the bottles were once physically kept behind the bar. I've been in a number of bars, and to my knowledge, a lot of them are still kept there. The most expensive stuff was once kept on the top shelf, while the cheap stuff is still kept in the well or the speed rack. Again, I've been to at least bars recently, and uh, they still kind of do that, so... What year is this game from? See if there's an indication somewhere on the box. This box here, 2016. All right, they, they, they straight up live in 2016. And uh, I'm living in 2023 and apparently nothing has changed. Apparently, that's one correct answer. Very good. I didn't even need to phone a friend for that one. Lingo, nice, that's, that's one. So I guess they'll do it by tally mark. So I've gotten one so far in the lingo category. Very good, very good. I know I've gone through this uh, box a couple times before. Um, I don't know if I've actually gone through all the things. I don't think I ever took a time where I went through the entire thing and just answered a bunch of, quen a bunch of questions. Although I do remember things like Kirschwasser, I learned from one of the categories in this book. I don't know whether it was the ingredients, wild card drinks, or whatever column there, but it was asking, I think, what type of spirit uh, Kirschwasser is, and the answer is an ODV. So if that pops up, I will skip that one because I already know it. It seems that, I don't know if you can, the contrast on this die is not very, very good. Well, where is the camera here? There you are. But I got a four on this one. So it looks like we're going for a wild card. Wild card? Next question. Popping on in. Oh, I've actually never opened this one. So I have apparently never done the wild cards. That door just didn't come wrapped. Again, I think I found this at a thrift store. All right. Uh, it just means this probably hasn't been shuffled, so I'm going to shuffle this. I do not have an adequate shuffling technique i really i struggle with shuffling i'm not very i'm not very good at this whatsoever so i just kind of do this really really lame thing here i could just do the whole like bridging of the cards and honestly i don't know if i have the amount of respect for these cards as i do for some other cards so i'm gonna go for it or at least i'm gonna try to that's all right my rings are literally falling off here <laughs> all i want to do is randomize the cards the, the, the piles just aren't big. You know what? This is this is not working. I'm just wasting time here. Instead, I'm just gonna I'm just stalling. I'm afraid of what the wild card answer will be. Okay, okay. Question number two. Evidently, James Bond ordered a drink, ordered and drank all of the following except for a a vodka martini shaken not stirred, b a black velvet, c an americano, d a pink squirrel. I, for one, have never watched the James Bond movies, so I really don't know what the correct answer is here. Let me take my angle and move it a little bit close to these cards so everybody can see as well as I can. I really don't know. I know that James Bond did do the whole, I have a, a, a vodka martini shaken, not stirred, unless it, was a, unless it was a gin martini. I actually don't know. I have absolutely no context on James Bond. And um, so I don't really, I'm sh shooting at blanks here. I would think, so a vodka martini, 
is vodka and dry vermouth. The black velvet, which we made a couple of weeks ago, is Guinness and champagne. An Americano is, I think it's a Negroni without the, without the gin in it. So I think that's just club soda, sweet vermouth, and Campari. And then a pink squirrel. I actually have no idea what a pink squirrel is. I've never heard of that before. I wouldn't pa put it past Bond, James Bond, to order a pink squirrel. I don't know, we'll have enough context on the James Bond movies to know whether he's ever been to like, so, so, like when I think of Guinness, I think of like Ireland, Scotland, Champagne and stuff, Champagne like France. I feel like he is French, so I feel like I wouldn't go with the Black Velvet. An Americano, an Americano. I feel like I would, I could hear spy James Bond going like, I'll take an Americano or something like that. So I don't want to go with that. And I don't want to, but I don't want to pick Pink Squirrel because Pink Squirrel seems like it's the, it's the answer that seems the most out there and they threw in there. And if that is the correct answer, I'd be like, oh, of course that's why they threw it in there. But if it's not the correct answer, I'd be like, whoa, of course if it's a red herring. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with the Black Velvet. I don't know. I feel like James Bond, if I had to imagine, is a, is a, and it's an exquisite kind of spy among men. You know, if he's gonna order something, it's not gonna be something as simple as a Guinness in champagne. That's, that would be my guess. So I'm gonna go with B, black velvet. And the answer is the pink squirrel, naturally. Of course, the one that I thought could have been the red herring, most obviously, is apparently not the red herring. It really is the right answer. But I have no idea what a pink squirrel is. So let's see if they have a recipe in here. And if so, we'll try one for ourselves. A pink squirrel. Though moviegoers associate 007 with a specially prepared martini, the licensed to kill lady killer drank many things between the pages and sheets of Ian Fleming's novels. Bond has been known to drink a black velvet, champagne and Guinness stout, and in Casino Royale he sips a mixed drink of Campari, sweet vermouth, and soda water, code name Americano, but tells me absolutely nothing about what a pink squirrel is. So at this point, I'm met with a bit of a query here. A quandary. I don't know what a pink squirrel is, so now I have to figure this out. I'm going to go into my recipe book. Actually, we'll go back to the other angle. I'm going to see if I have this in my collection of stuff. This is my recipe keeper app. This is how I keep track of all of the recipes that I have amassed over the past couple of years. Pink Floyd, Starburst, Ginberry Fizz, anything squirrel related? Squirrel. Wild squirrel sex is the only cocktail I have in here. But I wonder if it's related to a pink squirrel. That contains a bunch of stuff, it seems. A bunch of stuff indeed. Let me, let me even out this camera a little bit. Yeah, that's all right. All right, well, let's see. Let's see if we can find, let's do it. We can do a little bit of research together. Let's see what a pink squirrel was. So we're just gonna Google it. Pink squirrel, squirrel. Pink squirrel, pink squirrel drink. We'll find one. Liquor.com says a pink squirrel is Boozy. This was written by Liquor.com. Incredible. It looks like it might have, it's got a nice, like, wait, pinkish color to it? It's kind of pinkish. From my angle, it looks a little more white. Invented in the 1940s, supposedly by Brian's Cocktail Lounge in Milwaukee, the drink is a lot in common with a Brandy Alexander and the Grasshopper. There's some, got to be some cream components in there. <laughs> Excuse me. Creme de Noyau was never a common sight on back bars. Creme de Noyau, I think, is, is that almond? I think creme de noyau is almond. Or maybe I can we'll do, double check that. It's all about education here. Creme de noyau, Google was about to tell me. Tap to search results. Almond flavored, almond, almond flavored cream liqueur. I don't think I have anything almond flavored cream wise. I got amaretto. Might be a close stand in, I suppose. A pink squirrel is officially made with three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of creme de noyau or like almond cream liqueur, three quarters of an ounce of 22 milliliters of creme de caco, one and a half ounces or 44 milliliters of heavy cream, freshly grated nutmeg. That does sound actually a lot like a grasshopper, a grasshopper being creme de menthe and white creme de caco uh, or green creme de menthe specifically, I guess, to get that grasshopper color. And I think you just put cream in there. That sounds really similar to that. And I don't exactly know what a Brandy Alexander is off the top of my head, but I imagine it uses brandy and cream as the, as the, as the base pieces there. So let's see. Strain it into a chilled cream coupe glass. I don't have any, I don't have any creme, creme de almond there, unfortunately. Right creme de cake. I do have white creme de cake though. And the yummy, heavy cream is downstairs. Okay. Well, instead what I'll do, if I can't make that today, I'll just do my, my normal technique. Usually I'll go in and I'll just kind of, I'll add that to the collection. And then we'll move on to another 
trivia question. Because I got that one wrong. Pink squirrel. Thank you. Added. All right. Well, apparently, I didn't get this one right. I don't know enough about my James Bond, so I didn't get that one. So that's a big ol' X. I think, I think, better yet, aside from keeping score on this little, this little sheet here, I should probably just keep score on the big old chalkboard behind me. So let's see. Right now, I'll do a little bit of, do a little bit of a challenge in here. And if anybody would like to participate as well, you're more than welcome to start participating along. I'll write your name up on the board and we can all try to play together. I just will like try to finagle between not looking at chat. I can just like, I can just flip my computer down. I can't read everything else from here. But so far, we have one player, and that's me, Amron. You know, that guy who spells his name with an X? Cameron is currently, in terms of wins, losses, or I guess corrects and otherwise. Currently, one, one. I don't know my James Bond. It's rather unfortunate. I've been me. I, I tell myself that oh, I've been meaning to watch one of those, or I, I. That's on my list of things to watch. And although there isn't technically an official list of things that I want to watch, if somebody asked me, "Hey man, you want to watch James Bond tonight?" and I was doing nothing else, I'd be like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." Although at that point, if I liked it, I'd feel inclined to go and watch all of the other James Bond movies. Um, which might not be very good, all things considered. But it's a lot of time. Although, I've been told they're really good. I think one of them came out while I was still in high school. I don't remember which one that was. In any case, on to question number three of the evening. I'm just going to keep on going. I, I don't know how long that I plan on doing this, but apparently I'm already... My thing says I've been at this for 20 minutes now. Is that so? Have I really been babbling for almost 20 minutes now? Jeez, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> I surprise myself even sometimes. All right, let's roll another die. I think this, this die here is like really difficult to read, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put that back in the die bag. I'll put that back down there. Let's see. What did the die roll this time? It's a two. It's gonna be an ingredients question. Coming from the ingredients pile, we have what ingredients are in a tequila sunrise? Well. I know that a tequila sunrise looks something like this. A sunrise over a place that may create tequila. When I think of a place that may create tequila, I think of Oaxaca, like Mexico. And Mexico, just like everywhere else in the world, except for the poles of the earth, have warm sunsets. So I'm gonna guess there's some yellow in there and some red up on top. I know what a tequila sunrise is. It's got grenadine, it's got orange juice, and it's got tequila in it. And like, I'm thinking, I don't think it has any other components to it. I think that's pretty much all you get, but there might be a little like sweet, uh, like simple syrup or agave syrup in there. But I think I'm, getting, I'm encroaching into margarita territory. I'd say my final answer for the tequila sunrise are tequila, orange juice, and grenadine. Tequila, orange juice, and grenadine syrup. They call it syrup specifically. The tequila sunrise is a mixed drink that is made up of three parts of tequila, six parts of orange juice, and one part grenadine syrup. Ah, I guess I should have probably guessed at the uh, the proportions there, the ratio. Did not do that though. That's a half point. Pour the tequila and orange juice into a glass over ice. Do not shake and, or stir. Add the grenadine, which will sink to the bottom. Garnish with an orange slice and a cherry. A tequila sunrise is cool to look at in case you're not privy. The orange juice and the tequila together make a very nice like yellow orangey color and you add the grenadine in there, usually a bright like red color. It will go at the top and it will sink to the bottom, create this really, really cool gradient between like the orange and the red. Being that I've already pulled my phone out once, I will, I will share what I, what I know about it already. I will put a little picture up because it's fun and we explore things around here. Yeah, Tequila Sunrise. That is a cool, that is a very, very cool image. It's the, it's the, it's the gradient that gets me. That beautiful gradient from like the yellow to the red. It's kind of like a sunrise over tequila, or at least so I'm assuming. So the question was actually, what ingredients are in the Tequila Sunrise, not how to mix it? So that's, that's another score. Nice. That's two so far. So as it stands right now, evidently, I do know what I'm talking about. At least according to Mixed Drink Smarts, it's, the, the box doesn't even, doesn't even call itself trivia. I don't even know, I'm the one who's calling this trivia. Nobody else is. It's just me. 
And really, what is the distinction between trivia and, let's say, a quiz? Does it matter, like, is it amount, the amount of people who are playing? Is it the context of which the quizzicals are being given? It's, it's me. So I'm testing myself. It's a test. It's a mixed drinks, smarts test. I did very well in high school, in college. So watch out, y'all. Next category is lingo. Back to lingo. We haven't gotten a drinks one yet. Lingo here says, or asks rather, a dirty martini has A, a shot of scotch, B, a cocktail onion, C, olive jar brine, or D, a black olive. A few months ago, we had a stream on casino cocktails, and there were a couple folks out there who were very swift to correct me in that time that, a dir that dry martinis are the ones that are more dry, not because they have more dry vermouth in them, but because they have more of the dry base spirit, gin, or vodka in them. This is not what that question is. But since then, I've learned my lessons about martinis, and I know already that the dirty martini uses some sort of brine with it. Could be an onion brine, if you want to do something closer to like a Gibson, but this one, just the regular dirty martini, would be olive jar brine. You put olives in it, because you usually garnish your martinis, or at least you can, with, un with, um, with olives. Olive jar brine, indeed. Answer is C. Good job. Nice job for the folks who got it correct. Franklin D. Roosevelt may have popularized the briny, dirty martini, and there are several other versions as well. A smoky martini comes with a dash of scotch instead of the usual vermouth, and a buckeye martini is garnished with a black olive instead of the traditional green. If olives aren't your cup of teeny, get it? Get a Gibson martini with a cocktail onion for a garnish with absolutely no space between cocktail or onion on that card. That is, that is kind of funny to look at. That's interesting. I actually did not know about the smoky martini or the buckeye martini. That is something that is actually something new to me. So this is kind of a means to discover a couple of new things too. So this is just one of the I didn't realize that I was going to be learning things here. I thought it was just kind of testing the knowledge we already had. That's kind of cool. I'm into that. So that's I think another technically another correct answer there. So I will mark that as such. However, being that we learned about what is it? The um Oh, what was the one on there? It was a smoky martini. It comes with a dash of scotch. That's kind of cool. I'm going to write that down just so I know what that is in the future because I'd never heard of that before. I'm, I understand there's an entire family of martinis and stuff out there. Let's see. I'm going to add a little notes section. Notes. Things we've learned so far. Dirty martini. I guess I already knew about the dirty martini. Dirty martini. Smoky. The same. Buckeye. And Buckeye was with the black olive instead of the more traditional green olive. Um, and Smokey with, with some scotch. Scotch. Buckeye with black olive. Honestly, whenever I've imagined a martini, I've always just kind of defaulted to imagining it having the green olive inside of it, either with the little red, bit, red little pickled thing on the inside or otherwise. I never really consciously made the connection that it's specifically not black olive. I just kind of assumed that like it just wasn't the black olive in the particular instance of like the photo that I was looking at or otherwise. So that's what I was, that's like, that's what immediately came to mind. The fact that like the Buckeye version specifically calls for the black olive is something that's kind of new to me. I'd want to make up either of those like as a means to kind of try both of them out, but I don't have any black olives in the apartment and I've been meaning to get scotch at some point, but I just can't set my heart on a particular type of scotch, so I actually don't have any right now. So, we'll move on. We've learned a little bit more so far. All things considered, all things considered. We need to do another question. Moving on with the trivia and stuff. While we're at it though, I'll, I'll open up the floor for questions from other folks as well. If there's something that we're meaning to look into, I really like to do research on cocktails and stuff, so if there's something that we should look into, maybe do a whole entire stream on. I'm down to do a little digging to see what we can find. Three, another one. Goodness, more on the lingo. And another lingo question it comes. True or false? Maraschino, maraschino, maras maraschino cherries get their name from a type of cherry called marasca. I don't know. I always associated maraschino cherries with maraschino liqueur, but then I come to think of it, like the maraschino cherries that like I'd buy in the store that my parents used to buy, I don't think they came in maraschino liqueur. I think they just came in like either like vodka or brandy or something like that. I think I have some maraschino liqueur, uh, maraschino cherries in the fridge 
that are set in moonshine, I think, which is most certainly not that. Morasca, though. Cherry called it Morasca. I, I wouldn't actually know that because I don't know if Morasca is a type of cherry. I feel like it's not the first that I've heard of it, though. So like what I want to say is it's got to do with the liqueur of the same of the same name in particular, you know, your Luxardo Maraschino, this old this old bottle here. But I don't think it's actually got to do with that. Well, actually, maybe we can maybe we can use a little bit of a hint here. The back of this bottle, Maraschino, because I have the I have the resource on me. And this is kind of like an open book test except I'm not using the internet and I'm not using the machine either. This bottle says to me that it says on it PR Fabrica Excelsior. I don't know what that means. Nothing on here. Oh, the increasing counterfeit of my liqueur induces me to alter the label as follows and to authenticate it by my signature as at foot. Okay, I that's that has nothing to do with the cherries. On the back, Luxardo Maraschino says, is made according to the original recipe in the possession of the Luxardo family since 1821. Delicious on fruit salads, strawberries, raspberries, kiwi, and pineapple. It absolutely gave me no hint there. And even the bottle itself has a little, a little images of these fruit on them. And they kind of look like cherries. So maybe that's supposed to be a reference to the Marasca cherries. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say that's true. That it's based off of, or it's named for the Marasca cherry. And if not, then I fell for the same trick that my, one of my bartending teachers once, or not to say, I had a bartending teacher, I just took some bartending classes once upon a time, convinced me that blue curacao came from blue oranges. It's not the case. And I hope that this card is not leading me astray like she did. The answer is true. Marasca, Marasca cherries. That is actually true. In the early days, Maraschino cherries were Marasca cherries preserved in Maraschino liqueur, which is a clear liquid made from the cherries and their crushed pits. The pits produce a slight almond flavor, which is now recreated with almond flavoring in the neon Maraschinos we all know and love. Today, most Maraschinos are cherries preserved in sugar syrup and flavoring, and then died. That's actually kind of interesting. So, I did answer that question correctly. So I'll take that down, but it was not because I was sure in my answer. Interesting to note here, the maraschino itself specifically, I find that when I first tried maraschino liqueur, I, I, I could get like those little cherry notes. I could get that there was something else going on there that I couldn't quite pick up. And I described maraschino liqueur as being a little more like pit of the cherry as opposed to, let's say, the rest of the cherry itself. And to read that description there on the card, if I had to take the card itself as a source of truth here, apparently we're, it was kind of on the money there, although I didn't really know what I was talking about. I imagine it more in terms of like, if you were to take a cherry and bite the whole damn thing, it doesn't necessarily immediately taste like the flesh of the cherry. It's like the inside of it, the, what I would imagine the pit would be. And apparently it's saying that there's a sort of almond-like quality that the pits happen to have. And I'm very curious about that. It's specifically called out Maraschino liqueur. And if it's saying there's like almond components in there, hopefully I haven't like completely and utterly like focused my brain to find specifically the almond in there. I'm actually very curious about that. So I'm gonna take some Maraschino liqueur. I'm gonna put it into a little cordial glass and try to see if we can find what it is that they're referring to. As naturally, Maraschino is, according to the thing here, a clear looking liqueur, got a very, very clear color to it. Got a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful smell to it. And it smells very similar to Kirschwasser. Kirschwasser being a cherry brandy of sorts, an eau de vie in this case. It just smells very, like I've smelled things in my Italian household family gatherings that smelled like maraschino. I don't know what it was. They might have been like cookies around the holiday season or something like that. That's a very, a very familiar smell to me. I wouldn't even say that it smells like cherries, to be honest. It smells almost like a completely different fruit, almost, almost cream-like on the nose. Hmm. You know? I get that. I really do get that. It's almost, from what I'm getting right now, it's a little bit almost cotton candy. -y. It's definitely got those cherry notes. I can almost taste, I can, I can taste the almond now. And I say that not because I'm focused on the almond flavor or the fact that I had almonds earlier today while I was at work. There was a little snack pack they were giving away and I had to go for it. But when I think of amaretto, 
I don't think of almond. I just think of amaretto. Amaretto to me just has like a particular almond-like taste that I've just been trained over time to call almond because it's an almond liqueur, an almond-based liqueur. This gives me the same vibe. It tastes to me a little bit like amaretto would. Specifically, I think Di Sereno. I don't think I have any of that left. The closest amaretto that I happen to have is this Lazzaroni here, which um, I guess I can do a little bit of a taste test too between the two of them. Or a smell test too. The maraschino almost smells more like a basement or a cellar versus the Lazzaroni, which smells more like if I had to compare the two to each other, Luxardo is the basement, and Maraschino, or I'm sorry, Luxardo and Maraschino is the, the basement smell, and the Amaretto in the other case is like is like a like a pool, like a washroom. I'm imagining this, bear with me for a moment. Luxardo reminds me more of an old shed or an attic, as opposed to Amaretto the Lazzaroni in this case specifically, because that's just what I have, that reminds me more of like a like a basement that has like a concrete ground that's always kind of wet in one of the corners. We don't exactly know why it's wet or why the walls drip, but there is a washing machine over there, so we can only assume that the water main is in the wall somewhere. That's the impression I'm getting. Not exactly sure where that comes from. But I can see that. I totally can. And actually, while we're at it, I'm going to take my Boulevardier and add a little maraschino to it because it's all about trying new things, this whole mixology thing. I wonder if that changed the taste of it at all. No, not really. Not, not enough that goes in there in this time. I'll put that little cordial glass in the honorary bucket that sits behind me. We'll move on to another question. Oops, I dropped one of my bottle openers. We're good, we're good. So, so far, the score is, I have gotten three, four answers correct, and um, one answer wrong, because it was James Bond, and I don't really watch that many movies, all things considered. I'd like to watch more. If anybody has movie recommendations, please hit me up. I need to do, uh, it takes time to write all these things on the board around me, and I, I need to watch movies and animes and other stuff to keep myself busy, and, uh, and feel like I'm being double productive at the same time, it seems. So, we'll bring out the box over here, back into mixed drink smarts, get into the mix. I found this in a thrift store, nobody's sponsoring me for this. I have four! We're going back to a wild card, wild card option. For each roll of the die, we have these four different options, as a quick reminder. Wild card question is, another true or false? True or false? Distilled spirits like brandy, gin, rum, and tequila are loaded with carbohydrates, fats, and cholesterol. Intuitively, I want to say that that is not true. And the reason that I say that is a, a part of the fermentation process is you need to... You know, fermentation happens with various different types of organisms. We'll take yeast, for example. Yeast will go in, it will eat the sugars, the carbohydrates, my knowledge of chemistry coming into play here, at least I say very confidently and perhaps cockily, pretentiously, I don't know. They eat the carbohydrates and they poop out alcohol. They break it down to a simpler component, that simpler component being alcohol. So to think that something that doesn't have, that has so much alcohol in it, still has a bunch of carbohydrates, fats, and cholesterol actually doesn't seem that correct to me. I think what you can do is you can suspend fats in alcohol using techniques like fat washing and stuff. Cholesterol I'm a little less familiar about, I don't really, I don't know how that interplays with things, but I would think if you had a lot of carbohydrates in there, or a lot of sugars, for instance, you'd be talking about a liqueur and not a distilled spirit like brandy, gin, rum, or tequila. So I want to say that this is false. And if it's not false, excuse me, I'm very curious to see about what I'm missing. The answer is false. Incredible. Who knew? The added fruit and sugar and carbonated and carbonated beverages add the most carbon hydrates in terms of, remember, the context of all this quizzical stuff is mixed drinks, apparently. And at, um, most carbohydrates, fat, and cholesterol and alcoholic beverages, if you want to drink distilled liquor, and who doesn't, mix it with club soda as opposed to tonic water or Diet Coke. And if you are counting calories, remember to avoid fruit juices and paper umbrellas. Are people out there really eating paper umbrellas? Or maybe it's the fact that paper umbrellas are put in things like tiki drinks and they've just got a lot of sugar or like crushed ice and stuff on them. I don't, I don't really know where that's coming from. But evidently, 
That was an easy one. Most of that stuff winds up coming out in the fermentation process or gets added later when you actually make your cocktail. In my case, I guess the most sugary things that are in my drink right now, my little modified Boulevardier that I've got over here, you have your Campari, which is a sweet, a bittersweet orange liqueur. So that's got it, liqueur. It's got more sugar in it than it does alcohol by volume, at least from one thing I read on the interwebs. So it's got more, it's got sugar coming in from that angle. Sweet vermouth. Also, rather sugary, a fortified wine. It's still got a lot of the sugars, carbohydrates, and I guess cholesterols and stuff in there as well. So it's kind of on the sweeter side. And then I add some, I add the, I add the small batch whiskey to it. Larceny is a whiskey, right? Bourbon, bourbon mash bill, the bourbon in there, which doesn't have a lot of sugar in it, but still a little bit left. And there was a touch of maraschino in there too. So all things considered, this is a rather, this drink itself, considering to itself to be the mix, is a little more on the uh, cholesterol, carbohydrate, and otherwise side. Move on to another question. Next question that we have is... In the category of lingo, it seems to be all about lingo. And as I am hip and self-proclaimed young, 25 years, I will say that I am well prepped for this question. Question. Answer. Lingo, angel teat, swamp dew, and moonshine all refer to rye, scotch, Irish whiskey, or corn whiskey. Hmm. Well, the only thing that I recognize there is moonshine, but more is it more is a general term, more so than other things. When I think of moonshine, the first thing that comes to mind are bottles like like flavored liqueurs that use moonshine as a base. One thing, one case in point is this apple pie moonshine by Old Smoky. So that it is really really close up there, oh, opposite direction. This Old Smoky moonshine, it's blue raspberry, so it's blue on the inside, and um, maybe I can use this as a I can use this as help. The back of this bottle says, spirits distilled from corn with natural flavors and certified color on the moonshine bottle. I'm inclined to think that the answer to this is actually corn whiskey. Now, another thing that I'm curious about as well, I guess they, I don't really have any other moonshines here except for the old smoky ones. But what, what is it that makes moonshine the corn whiskey? I hope the back of this thing will answer that question for me. I was inclined to do that anyway because I've never heard of rye corresponding to moonshine because moonshine like or, or rye corresponding to yeah rye corresponding to moonshine because like to my knowledge it would impart a flavor and i think moonshine is supposed to be a little more uh little more neutral there scotch is smoky i think by nature perhaps i haven't had too many scotches but of the one or two that i've had they're all very smoky quality and then irish whiskey too same thing i i know that the jameson is not moonshine so that's where i'm going with my answer for d corn whiskey D, corn whiskey, excellent. After the 18th Amendment banned the sale of alcohol, America was dry for 13 long years. However, instead of stopping alcoholic consumption, prohibition made people find other ways of getting liquor, liqueur, liquor, liquor, including making their own. Angel teat, swamp dew, and moonshine are all words for illegally distilled corn whiskey made during prohibition. I didn't know about either of those terms. That's actually kind of cool. And so now I'm very curious about what kind of stuff we can find about Swamp Dew and Angel Teat. I'm gonna go with Swamp Dew first because that seems funny and less likely to stain my search history. So I'm seeing here Swamp Dew, Swamp Dewberry, herb-like shrub, Swamp Dewberry. I'm getting a lot of Swamp Dewberries. Underfoot, Electric Farms, Dewberry, Sweat Tears and Swamp Dew on Untap.com. I'm getting there. I don't think I see anything about whiskey here. I guess I have to search up Angel Teat then. Angel Teat. Actually, I'm going to do this off camera first to see. <laughs> Just to see what results pop up on the screen first. Suckling the teat of an angel. The angel's tit by the educated bar five. Beautiful. Angel's tit. Angel's tits. Angel's titties. Angel, angel titties. None of it's alcoholic, though. We just, it's actually, or no, I'm sorry. None of it is inappropriate, though. It's just like, we got nipples for bottles. We have a little cool little ornament there and uh, videos by the educated barfoot. So uh, no mention of corn whiskey. And I feel like moonshine will be a very easy uh, query to search for. So we get that, did get that one correct as well. Corn whiskey, that's another one. I would say personally that none of these questions are particularly difficult. If anybody's following along at home, how are you doing so far? 
Apparently, you have to get the 12 correct answers to win, and we are already halfway there. But we haven't yet reached the hour mark. I will continue. I don't know. I don't know when I'll stop. Maybe when I, when, maybe when I finish one of these piles, I'll stop. The next section, three, it's back to lingo again. My God. Another three. All right. And my pile is now upside down. True or false? Liquor is different from liqueur. Yes, it is. Liquor is alcohol. Lots of alcohol in the bottle. Liqueur, if I'm correct in saying, based off of my own prior research, liqueur specifies that the bottle of alcohol in front of you has a higher percentage of sugar than it does of alcohol. If you have a 40% by volume liqueur, then at least 40% of it is sugar. I don't know if that's a legally I don't know if that's a legally binding rule or not, but that's to my knowledge. So I'd say true. It is different. Indeed. True! Liquor is simply a generic term for any distilled alcoholic beverage, while liqueur applies to a range of drinks where the spirit base has been sweetened and flavored with things like herbs, and spices, nuts, fruits, or flowers. They give no mention about the proportions there. And that's okay with me. But that's another one. It's interesting, I was literally I think I just talked about that. My mind is what my mind is melding with the cards that we see here. Let's go for another one. The next category is going to be ingredients, another test of knowledge. And the question this time is what ingredients are in the classic mojito? A mojito is a mint mixed drink, uh, usually with a base of rum, if I'm correct in saying. Excuse me. I don't know if my burps are being caught by this lavalier microphone. Interesting. But a mojito is used, I know that there's rum in there. I know that there's mint in there. It could be, I think you can make it with fresh mint if you want to. You can use creme de menthe in there as well. So long as you're getting something minty in there. I'm actually curious now that I think about it. Fernet Branca to me is a very minty, like like uh, bitter spirit. And I wonder if you can make like a like a mojito riff using Fernet Branca. Just a, just a random, random thought there. Um, but I know you put rum and that in there. Rum and mint of some sort. And I think the rest of it is just club soda. I don't think it gets much more complicated than that. You can also sweeten it with simple syrup as well, if it's a little not as sweet for you, naturally. I think you could usually put, um, I feel like I've made my own mojitos with crushed ice in it, because uh, it, get, it gets, gets, the, gets the pressure out, you know? Crush a little bit of ice, or like put it in a blender. You can do like a blend mojito too, I think. Maybe, we'll see. And you put a little, that, that seems prepped for a cocktail umbrella. That seems right. So that's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say some sort of mint liqueur, creme de menthe or crushed up mint, soda, and rum. We'll see if I'm missing anything. Rum. Oh, lime wedges. Mint leaves, sugar, and club soda. I completely forgot about the lime in there. Two parts rum, four lime wedges, 12 fresh mint leaves, sugar, club soda, or soda water. Gently press together the limes and the sugar. Bruise the mint by rubbing it between your palms. Rub the mint around the rim of the glass, and then drop them in. Half fill the glass with crushed ice. Add the rum and stir. It's how you make a classic mojito according to these instructions here. I completely forgot about the, the lime juice there and the lime wedges. Oh, well, here it says slime wedges, not specifically juice itself. And you're saying that you muddle everything together, gently press together the limes and the sugar, bruise the mint. I don't know if that, they didn't say specifically muddle. I wonder if that means you're supposed to like take the lime wedges and just like put the sugar up against it and like kind of squish it around a little bit, which you could probably do with a little could probably do with a muddler one of these guys probably makes sense i used to have a fresh mint plant in this apartment um but soon after anna and i moved i killed it it's dead and that makes me very very sad there i miss uh it was a menthol man the non-binary mint plant despite being named menthol man i miss that plant i got that one wrong i completely forgot about the lime wedges when i think of Lime and mint together, my mind auto-completes with tequila because the Mockingbird cocktail uses lime, tequila, and creme de menthe in there. I think my, my wires in my brain were getting a little quith crossed. Move on to another question. I think, I think what I intend on doing here is I'm gonna try to see how, like if I can get through any one of these piles this evening. It might actually be a fool's task. Cause we, some, of these, some of these piles are pretty damn thick there. Jasper, how did you kill a supposedly unkillable plant? Um, you see, when you transplant a plant from one location to another, you can sometimes shock it. And evidently, I shocked the mint plant. To be fair, by the time that I finally let it go, it did still have some green left on it, 
but no matter how much I watered it and moved it around, it didn't want to, it didn't want to go back to normal. I tried trimming it and everything, but I somehow killed it. Well, now I'll go back to it. One day I will. I rolled a one. That means we're going to a drinks question. The question this time being, drum roll please. All right. What liquor and liqueur are combined in a red apple martini? Sour apple vodka and whiskey, gin and sour apple liqueur, whiskey and apple schnapps, champagne and apple schnapps. When I think of a martini, first thing that comes to mind is either gin or vodka. So I don't think it's a champagne thing. So I'll, I'll cross a process of elimination. I don't think it's D. And I don't think it's whiskey. Is I don't think it's whiskey. Uh, and I don't think it's the top one either. So actually, if I don't even think of whiskey, I think of B. The only one left remaining is B. Gin and sour apple liqueur. And when I think of martinis, naturally, I think of vodka and gin. So gin's one of those. And then sour apple liqueur. That makes logical sense. So I'm going to go with B. I think a red... But then, you, you know what? Well, hold up a second. A red apple martini. As opposed to a green apple martini. Green apples are sour. So maybe, maybe this is one of those cases where instead of being a gin or vodka martini, this is instead based off of the whiskey here. I don't know, because I don't think, if you were to call it a red, if you were to call your drink a red apple martini and you put something sour in there, you would be, you would be throwing people off. If I ordered a red apple martini, I would not expect it to be sour. I would want a green apple martini or just an apple teeny or a sour apple martini. I would not want something that is overwhelmingly sour, like those sour apple pucker stuff. Or like, I have a sour apple liqueur down here. It's like Johnny Bootlegger, I think. It's got a very, very green, like this is, this is straight up, this is straight up sour apple here. And it is really, really sour and tastes like one of those Jolly Ranchers there. And it's got it's got quite the green hue to it. You see that on the back of this? Very, very green. But I don't think it's that one. I'd say that you have that you'd have to use some other type of apple liqueur that isn't sour. So actually, I'm gonna go against my first uh, conjecture here that it's got that I, I take out A, C, and D. I think it's actually the whiskey and apple schnapps. Because I don't know if you I don't know if this would be sour. That doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm actually going to go with C on this one. Contrary to some other believed conclusions that I have earlier. And the answer is C. Ooh, okay. Interesting. If you want to make a red apple martini, combine one jigger, aka one and a half fluid ounces, or about 22 milliliters, or I'm sorry, 44 milliliters of Crown Royal whiskey, one jigger, or about, I guess the, the same, one and a half fluid ounces, in that case, it's 44 in this case, of apple schnapps or sour apple vodka, which goes against the whole red apple part. I'll just say that right there. It's not, it's not red apple. All I go is guess some red apples are sour. One jigger of cranberry juice and ice into a drink shaker, shake well, and then strain into a martini glass. That doesn't sound that bad, actually. So I, I got that. We got that one correctly. We did. But we have a cocktail recipe that we can do. So I've actually, I've never had a red apple martini before, nor have I really ever heard of it before today. But I think I'm gonna make myself a red apple martini and we'll see how that, we'll see how that tastes. And it includes combining together Crown Royal Whiskey. I don't have Crown Royal Whiskey per se, nor do I have apple schnapps per se. But what I do have is Crown Apple liqueur the cool little apple crown royal guy which is actually where the, the dice bag that i was pulling those dice out of is the pack that this liqueur came in because crown royal bags make excellent die bags so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take this as the kind of the stand-in for the apple schnapps and then i'm gonna add i'm gonna tweak i'm gonna tweak the no, no actually i'm gonna keep with the ratio i'm gonna keep with the ratio it's one and a half of this guy as the app, the stand-in for the apple schnapps, and then one and a ounce of some whiskey, and then I'm gonna need to go get some cranberry juice because I believe the cranberry juice is downstairs. But let me check real quick and see if I have it up here. The answer, the answer is no. So unfortunately, my crown, my uh, cranberry juice is downstairs. If I have any left, which hopefully I do, I'm double checking around me to see if I got any cranberry. And I do not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go downstairs real quick and I'm gonna grab that cranberry juice. We're gonna make a red apple martini up next. And now that we actually have a recipe that we're making, here we go. 
red, apple, martini. And I'll put a little apple there. Why oh, actually, I can draw it in red because I have red markers. That red marker sucks. I can use this one. Red apple martini. We'll put a little... That is a really weird looking apple. You know what? Here we are. <laughs> it's a really weird looking apple, but we'll go for it. So actually, I have my lavalier microphone on my lapel. This is the first time I've done a stream with this particular microphone, and it is wireless. So I'm gonna try to see what happens if I take it downstairs with me. I don't think it's gonna transmit through the floor. We're gonna find out, because I'm really curious about it. Jasper says, uh, Cam, I looked on their site. That is Crown Royal Apple Whiskey. Yes. Crown Royal Apple Whiskey. You're right. Crown Royal Regal Apple Flavored Whiskey. That's true. It is not Apple Schnapps. I have one other apple liqueur down here, and it's this it's this uh, Berenson apple liqueur. It's not considered Apple Schnapps. It is whiskey, though. I was thinking we'd take the, the stand-in for the apple liqueur, which is whiskey, and then add more whiskey to it, as opposed to putting three whole ounces of Crown Apple in there with cranberry. But maybe that is something we'll try. I'm going to go get the cranberry juice just in case. And I'll think about it on the way back up. While I also talk to myself. Because I'm going to see how far this microphone actually goes. Currently I'm walking towards my stairs. And I have reached my stairs. I'm on the other side of the room. But I haven't gone downstairs yet. Now, as I continue to narrate, I am walking downstairs. I'm now completely in the basement. I don't know if anybody can hear me now. I'm not going to raise my voice like I usually do. Because I feel like people might still be able to hear me. I am now opening up the refrigerator. This is me whacking on the refrigerator parts to see where the cranberry juice is. And it's all the way in the back. As of right now, everybody, including me, is in the refrigerator. And I've just closed the refrigerator. I now have a bottle of cranberry juice in my hand. And I am walking back up my staircase. My head is now eye level with the floor. And I have reached the top of the staircase and I'm back on the other end of the room again. And I'm approaching the bar from the left-hand side from my perspective, the right-hand side from your perspective. And I've returned. Hello, everybody. And it seems that the microphone is back. Did it ever go away? I don't know. So I got the, got the cranberry juice here. And at the very least, I'm still going to use the cranberry juice because I think the, the, the implication here is the red apple martini wants to look red apple not red apple as in like red delicious red apple in terms of the color of the drink is red and it has the flavor of apple associated with it which is why we're using the cranberry juice in this case is my guess i don't know who made the red apple martini but if this is what their if this is what their mentality was and i see where they're coming from i'm taking this opportunity to move the cards and stuff out of the way i'll just kind of put the this is the card that we're inspired by i'm gonna put that in the front there that, is this your card? Because um, it certainly is mine. And I'll put the incorrect answers on the bottom and the correct answers up on top. So far, did I count that right? I did do that right. Did I put that on the board? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, we're at seven now. Apparently, as it stands, I do know what I'm talking about. And so the recipe calls for one and a half ounces of apple schnapps, one and a half ounces of whiskey, and it was a full, what is it? Uh, I need to look at the back of the card again. Oh, they're all equal parts. One and a half fluid ounces each of the cranberry juice, put into a shaker, shake well, and straight into a martini glass. So, you need the cranberry juice in there as well. Again, I like, a piece of me wants to use the Berenson apple, but it's not considered apple schnapps. Not that I really think that it's gonna be much of a difference, but I also kinda wanna use the Crown Royal Whiskey as well. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna be apple, really apple forward. It's definitely gonna be a different drink than if you just use straight whiskey, but uh, we're about to, it's all about experimentation and learning together. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna combine equal parts into a shaker and uh, see what happens. I'm gonna use my beautiful pink shaker over here. I feel like previously I put a lot of hate on this shaker, but you know what? Beautiful in its own right. You might not be the most utility tool in the shed, but you still are in the shed, and everyone's welcome in the shed. Rich, for the record, the mic worked the entire time. That is so cool! That's awesome! Thank you for your feedback! 
That's cool. Okay, so we're gonna combine equal parts into the shaker thing there. Yeah, this is the first time I'm using this. I haven't really uh, tested this extensively because I was like, I didn't really like the way that thing sounded. But the problem with that is, you know, one of the problems of the show naturally is if I walk away from where the microphone usually is, which is over here, then like things get weird and distorted and stuff. Um, it works well for when there's multiple people on stage naturally, but when it's just me up here, you know, so I'm gonna grab myself some ice over here. I can actually sit down on my cooler because I have a cooler over here now that I use every once in a while. I'm actually gonna try. This feel things feel a little th things feel a lot more casual this evening. Things feel a lot more comfortable this evening. So I'm actually gonna try to see if I can take this um, take this big old cube here and actually crack it inside of the glass like a real bartender does. Because I'm a real wait, damn it, I'm a real bartender. That's what I keep telling myself. Take your glass, your your cubie cuby doob and use the thick side of your bar spoon to whack it from a distance i know there's a technique for this and i haven't gotten it yet okay a little bit a little bit yeah you know what yeah there, there's just two large chunks of ice in there that's pretty much it that's that's really that's all i was able to do there take a look at that that's just just two chunks of ice that's all there is is it, the, is it perfect? No, of course not. But here we are. I can never make the ice break with a spoon work. One day. It's okay. It's okay, Brad. One day. I will... <coughs> <coughs> swallow my own spit. <coughs> One day. And that day, today, that day is today. One day, I will conquer the technique so that nobody else has to ever again. You're welcome. So we're making a red apple martini here, all because of this quiz card that we got correctly. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna add equal parts, all a jigger's worth. In this case, it's one and a half fluid ounces, about 44 milliliters a piece. You can just mix equal parts, do whatever you want to. Um, I'm gonna follow the instructions because uh, I like to do the cooking by the book. Although technically I'm not doing the cooking by the book because if I was doing the cooking by the book, I would have used actual whiskey and not Crown Royal apple whiskey. Um, or I would have used apple schnapps and not Berenson apple liqueur. But here we are because this is what we have. And I mean, if it tastes good, then nobody's doing this incorrectly. Perfect. And you can teach me when you're here. Yes. I'll do the day. It's coming up. It's coming up quicker. I'm looking forward to it so much. I just read a whole, oh my God. So More Than Awesome is coming up to guest star one of these days. I believe that's next month or so and bring in possibly the only two remaining bottles of chartreuse left in the world with him. We're gonna do a whole cocktail stream time trying to take advantage of chartreuse while it's, it's still accessible for those who don't make at least six figures in a year. Um, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun. The time is, it's going, it's going by so quick, dude. It really is. And also, now I have cooking by the book in your head. You're right. You're welcome. You gotta do the cooking by the book. Something, something, blah, blah. You gotta bake a pretty piggy. If something, <laughs> you know, you, you can't be lazy. Now you have a cocktail. We might need to do the Wednesday before Chartreuse Day rather than after. I'll discord this week. Oh, hit me up. So what we've done is we've combined equal parts, apple schnapps equivalent. In this case, I'm using an apple liqueur by a place called Berenson. Your whiskey equivalent, I'm using a crown apple, regal apple, apple flavored whiskey. It's delicious and it smells amazing. And cranberry juice to keep things red. We're going to shake that up as opposed to down. And um, we're going to put it into a martini glass and strain it. And that's, that's really all you need. I'm going to take this cranberry juice. I'll do a little bit of cleanup first before I wind up completely shaking things up. I'll put these guys away. It's interesting. I actually haven't... I don't think I've ever used this Berenson apple liqueur. The last time I used that bottle was when I was still in my fraternity and we were having a Christmas party and we were making some, we were making some hot apple cider and I poured like half the bottle in there. Oh, it was so good. Oh my God. It was probably the best apple cider ever anybody at that house had any, ever made. And then just shake it and we'll strain it into a martini glass and I'll grab that in just a moment, but first. It's the proper way to shake this. I don't know, I'm just not, I don't, I don't like these things. I don't know the proper shaking technique for these guys, these cobbler shakers. How does that sound with the microphone? It's the lavalier. I wonder if we can hear it like, I'll put that right up against the microphone and see what that sounds like. Is that is that ASMR? Is it, are we into that? Oh god, that smells so good. Wow. 
Wow, that smells so good. Wow, that is so good. Oh my God, I cannot wait to drink that. Let me grab myself a martini glass from down below. Set up his angle so things look absolutely perfect. Or at least as perfect as we can get it. All right, let's do a little, doing a little finagling here. Working on my own this evening. There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. And now I just gotta, I just gotta switch it. Did I, did I get the angle right? No, not really. Close though, close-ish. I will right, do that. We'll bring this over here. Put that in the back. Now it needs to be up a little bit. There we go. This looks a little bit better. A little bit. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. This was our, what was it, our red apple martini? I'll just put that back there. There we go. Red apple martini. I don't think this says anything about a garnish, does it? Nope, just strain it into a martini glass. Sure thing. Yeah, that's red. That's red. Oh no, the photobot wasn't working. R.I.P. Well, that's unfortunate. Let me give that bot a reset. I don't know why that didn't happen. We'll see when that thing pops back on again. I have feedback now. It should tell me when it does things incorrectly or, in or otherwise. All right. Let's try that one again. Hopefully that'll work a little bit better now. The chatbot was missing. I noticed that it didn't say that the party has begun earlier on either, so I might have to do a little bit of a thing in there. I couldn't take a picture. Something went wrong. Oh, no! Well, because the bot just ain't working, that's okay. Luckily, I've got a phone here to take a beautiful picture from my angle. Oh, that's okay. We have the beautiful ability to do this as well. Luckily, I got you covered. There's always a backup plan. Let's go over here to... Got that in the on, on topic channel. This is our red apple martini. There we go. And there it is. I posted that in the on topic channel on the Discord because that's where these things usually go. But the, the body ain't working today. Very interesting. I wonder. Hmm. Anyways, red apple martini. It was made with the combining equal parts apple schnapps or apple schnapps equivalent. So we also have whiskey in there or whiskey equivalent and cranberry juice. I actually put cranberry juice in there. That's not difficult. It smells good. And it's kind of actually it's got a really cool like I'm gonna go go for another angle up here again because it's got a cool like wavy pattern up on top of it. I don't know if that'll come up very well on the capture. But that looks really, really cool. I like the way that like oh you can kind of see it in the shadow. Sorta. That's cool. That's cool! I like the way that looks. I'll take a picture of that too, because apparently the photobot isn't working today. There we go. I Don't worry, don't worry. I got, I got y'all covered. If anybody's got it taken care of, it's the boy behind the bar. Oh, yes, it's true. You have taken that pic- It's true, it's true. I see that Brad is in the Discord saying, I took that picture. Give me the credit. You have all the credits. It was all your idea. And for that, I give all the credit to you, my friend. This is red apple martini. It smells like apple, naturally. There's like, at least half of this drink is considered apple liqueur at this point. It straight up smells like a red apple. There's no other way to slice that. Yeah. All things considered, I'm getting a little, little bit of the cranberry juice, but all that the cranberry juice is doing is elevating what I am interpreting to be the apple. I think, I think what the cranberry juice is doing there is, is if you bite, if you bite into an apple and you bite into the skin of it, there's going to be a bit of dryness there. And I think the dryness is being translated into the red apple martini with the addition of the cranberry juice. Also, also the red, the cranberry juice makes it a red drink. So I think that's the other piece of it as well. But it really does taste like I'm biting into, I mean, aside from the crunch, there's no crunch there, uh, into a red apple, like a red delicious. It's a little not, it's not quite exactly red delicious, but it's a different type of apple. It's one of those sweet apples, like Fuji or Gala. I don't really know. It's got a very, very pleasant aftertaste, and it reminds me of going to the farms to pick apples back in my hometown. 
Very cool. Dude, and that... Dude, that foam up on top, even though I've taken a couple of sips so far, it's still there. It still exists that way. It's, it's so cool. It is like a little amoeba. It just doesn't want to go away. That's so tasty. That's really, really tasty. I like that. Wow. Do I like it better than my slightly modified Boulevardier? I do, actually. Because the slightly modified Boulevardier is using some Larceny. I've never used Larceny in a Boulevardier before. And honestly, it's, uh, it's all right. I think, oh, when I tried, I made one of my other Boulevardiers the other week with uh, Jameson. Mwah. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful choice for beautiful choice for a Boulevardier. Oh my god! So let me put this on a put this on a coaster. I'll put that off to the side. Whichever drink I take a sip of next will be my prerogative. I'll keep it close to me so I don't spill anything. More than awesome says he does half Aperol and half Campari instead of the full tilt Campari. That's a good, that's a good point too. So long as you got some sort of bitter-ish red liqueur in there, I feel like I feel like you're doing your Negronis just fine. All right, so let me adjust this camera angle again. And now that we've made our red apple martini, we'll head on back to, we'll head back to trivia time. It's back to trivia, peoples. And the question that we had last time was this description up. That is upside down. I must turn that the other direction. There we go. There we go, right? Yep, that's just that's just how we did it. Boop, boop, boop. Nope, it's upside down again. What the? I just turned you the other direction, you silly phone camera thing. Okay, are you the correct direction now? Nope, you keep flipping on it. What are you doing, you silly phone? Okay, what if I... Nope, you flipped again. I'm gonna do that way? Okay, oh, oh, we're back upright again. Perfect. This phone is fighting with me. My goodness. All right. So this question was actually done correctly. I did guess that it was whiskey and apple schnapps, and we were actually able to try one. We actually made a little red apple martini. It's looking pretty good. I'd put that up to the camera, but I don't actually think I have enough space to do so. So far, during bar trivia, it is seven against two. Seven correct answered questions for two that I guessed incorrectly. One was because of James Bond. And uh, one was because I apparently forget how to make a mojito. So that's just where we are. Excuse me. If anybody else out there would like to play along as well, put your name up on the board. We'll see how many scores we can get. Although technically I'm answering every single question. So the number of questions I answer will be higher than everybody else's. Or unless maybe you're playing along at home three weeks from now. In that case, are you winning son, daughter, child? I'm curious. The next section will be, we roll the one, so it'll be drinks again. So I'll pull from the drinks pile, which are now completely off to the side of the bar. This next drinks question is, which of the following is a real mixed drink? A, the nicotini, B, the sushi teeny, C, the veal teeny, or D, the cheesy teeny? I have literally no context on how to answer that. I, I'll, I'll think of it this way. Okay, we'll break things down. We'll break things down step by step. Nicotini. Like nicotine. Like a nicotine cocktail. I, I am aware that there are drinks and whatnot out there that evoke that taste or smell or air of nicotine or cigarette smoke or tobacco. I've been told that when I took that wine class of mine a while ago, some wines can have an air of almost tobacco smoke to them. Or like some whiskeys and stuff too also have that smoky quality. It could almost be tobacco-y, smoky, cigarette-y, nicotine-y perhaps? I don't know. That seems that seems likely. The sushi teeny makes me think that you were doing something to the martini to make it evocative of sushi. I think of rice. When I think of the rice, I think of the uh, sake. You could, but in that case, it would just be a sake teeny. If you did a sushi teeny, maybe you'd have to have elements of like the, the, the seaweed in there that goes around the roll itself. In which case, maybe there's like a seaweed liqueur out there that I'm not aware of. I'm sure it exists. I think, I think that's called nigori, I think is what the seaweed is called. Or like fish. 
And I remember, I want to say, I have to double check this in my recipe book, but I could have sworn that I saw a recipe that actually used fish or something in a cocktail. And I have to see whether or not I'm, oh, no, okay, it wasn't fish. It was something called the chicken martini, which was apparently invented by somebody in Fish Town uh, in Philadelphia over here. The chicken martini by Martha in Fish Town. And I have a link here, but I can't click on the link because I did my recipe wrong. Not this, Nori, Nori, the CVD is Nori, you're right. Thank you for the swift correction there, Brad. I appreciate that. The, 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 so the next one is a Viltini. A Viltini seems similar to that chicken martini that I just pulled up on my screen, which is apparently a real thing. A, a, a chicken martini is a drink that somebody actually made, and I think it involved taking chicken broth and putting it into a cocktail. Actually, do I have the recipe there? To make the chicken martini, you combine chicken fat wash gin, vermouth, rosemary, thyme, lemon, and black pepper. I should definitely have a meat cocktail stream one time. I'll have to reach out to somebody about that because I know people who do meat cocktails and I'm very intrigued. Classic Martha putting chicken in martinis. Martha, what a gal. So the next option there is the cheese teen. And I think of it like I think of something that's fat washed. So you can fat wash spirits and you can like infuse flavors of certain things that contain fat and cholesterol in them like cheese, like bacon, meat, veal even and put that into a martini and i feel like if there's anything here that seems the most accessible to people who are cocktailogically inclined and also on the more quirky side i would think a cheese teeny is something that somebody would actually order now there are many different types of cheeses out there so i wonder if we're talking like a cheddar teeny or a brie teeny or a mozzarella teeny i don't really know i say sipping on my red apple martini um if I had to pick any of these, I think I have absolutely no basis of which of these are going, which of these is actually a real drink. And I'm actually very curious. So instead, I'm going to pick the one that I would like to taste the most in terms of these options here. And I think the one here that I'm thinking of that I'd love to taste the most is that sushi teeny. Because I love, I for one, I've been trying to find more sake drinks. Ever since I started doing mixology, I wanted to find more sake drinks because Anna and I like to drink sake. And also, I want to see how they do it. Did they, did they add the nori in there? Did they add the fish in there? Some, there's some avocado in there, some like advocat, which is apparently not from avocado, it's from eggs. Who knew? Interesting stuff. Other types of cheese teenies, like blue teeny, as Brad has said over there. What other cheese is out there? Goat teeny. Except it's not goat meat, it's goat cheese. I want to say the sushi teeny merely because I want to put that into the world. Maybe be the one who makes it myself. You know, actually, any of these if they don't exist. Ideas. The teeny, the teeny stream. Cocktail teeny-ology. That'll be on my boat. I know it's wrong. But if I'm not wrong, I'm curious. A, the nicotini. So the nicotini, weird, but true. In response to a smoking ban in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, bar owner Larry Wald invented this drink to help his smoking patrons cope with going cold turkey in his bar. There are many ways of making this mixed drink, which range from infusing vodka with tobacco leaves to squirting tobacco juice straight into the drink itself. Interesting. That is so interesting. So the nicotini is a real thing made by somebody apparently in Fort Lauderdale. That is so cool. Wow, I like that. I'm definitely writing that down on my board over there. So, that's another wrong answer from Mr. Bartender with an X over here. But that's okay, because so far from each of these failed attempts, we've taken something away from them and being able to learn from it. Apparently, a nicotini is a real thing. That's kind of cool. Nicotini. Nicotini. And that says something about infusing tobacco leaves or just putting tobacco juice. I mean, tobacco itself is a plant. It's a set of leaves. You can you can juice tobacco leaves like you can like make mint juice, I guess. That concept to me is interesting. Tobacco juice or infusion. That's actually kind of interesting. Now personally, I'm curious to what y'all's thoughts are. Do you smoke? Do you imbibe like that? Do you take a toke every once in a while? If you don't smoke, do you enjoy the smell of tobacco? Is the air of secondhand smoke something that's not totally off-putting to you? This may sound a little weird, but I'm actually not that 
off-put by the smell of cigarettes or cigars. I don't smoke a lot myself. It's purely a social thing for me. But even when I come around people who are smoking, I'm not completely put off by the smell. There is a certain air of tobacco or the other gunk that they're putting in those tiny little cylinders that is not totally unpleasant. And I don't know exactly where that comes from. Maybe it's something that I experienced as a child. I know there are p people in my family who smoke. Uh, some people who don't smoke anymore and some people who still continue to smoke to this day. So it's a bit of a family thing for me. So I wonder maybe if that familiarity from a young age is what allows me to just kind of not be like, Ugh, when somebody walks by with a, with a lit cig. I'll steal, I'll steal a drag on a cigarette if I'm out drinking with smokers, says More Than Awesome, because like the social aspect of it, but never more than just one pull. I have, from the, again, the, the social aspect of it, I wouldn't really do it on my own, like taking an entire cigar down before, which is a bad decision. I, I, I wouldn't recommend that to anyone. You don't need to take the entire thing down. You get, I, I got a little, I got a little fidgety. And uh, God, my mouth tasted weird for so many days. I think if there was anything that was pulling me back from smoking more often it's because anna doesn't like the smell that's the first thing there it's an, ex it's an expensive hobby because taxes on cigarettes and cigars are absolutely insane uh, to buy them in stores and stuff and also like the taste sticks around i'm not a big aftertaste kind of guy if you're if what i'm what if what i'm eating or drinking sticks around longer than like an hour i'm usually off put by it because i don't like like if i'm gonna drink something or eat something i don't really want it to stick around that long for the most part but that's kind of cool. The fact that there are things like that, that makes me, obviously that makes me think like, oh my God, maybe we do a whole stream based off of nicotine cocktails. Um, but again, I don't need to put that many, <laughs> for the sake of drinking and experimentation, maybe they'll just be like a one-off thing. Maybe like like a, a leaf cocktails. Trying to get ideas as we go through things. And so we will move on to another question. Another question indeed on trivia night. Hopefully we'll all learn something around here. Leaf is good. Leaf is a good one. I got a book there somewhere in my um every once in a while i like to tease on stream specifically the various different themes that i am attempting to plan for so i'll just kind of put this on the screen for a little bit this is my this is my cheat code this is my cheat app this is how i categorize everything and, and so i'll just do a little bit of a, a run through here just because i can because i like because i like to tease things in any case i'll put another question in there Mint, tobacco, basil, so many different types of leaves to cocktail with. There's so many of them. This next category is four. It's a wild card question. Popping in here. I also want to be a part of the Kynar stream. If I can find Kynar, Chinar, Chinar, whatever you pronounce it, it'd be fun. I think there are chartreuse and uh, Kynar combinations out there, but last I checked at the store, I was not able to find any, unfortunately. I was looking for it last week, specifically. Or it was the week before. It was one of, the, one of these days. One of these days I definitely was. Which of the following words does not describe absinthe? Green. Licorice flavored. A garnish. Illegal. Okay. Alright, so... I'm, I, I'm, I'm conflicted with this. Absinthe is green. I have a bottle of absinthe. It's Vio Carre. It is green. It is nice. It is lovely. This is what it looks like under the under the under the close up here. This is it on the back up here. Absinthe is wonderful. Is it licorice flavored? I believe so. Last I tried this, gave a very fennelly licorice vibe. And the only absinthe I knew is this Vio Carre. The only one I can really find here in Philadelphia for some reason. A garnish. Well, I've never really heard of absinthe being a garnish. Uh, absinthe itself is a drink, so to garnish with absinthe is, it, it seems like it's a thing, right? Because I think of, just like you can garnish with bitters, you can take a couple of bitters and kind of drip drop it up on top of your drink onto like the crema of a flip or something like that. If you consider that a garnish, I would also consider absinthe to be a garnish as well. You can add a little bit of absinthe on top of things. You can rinse glasses with absinthe. In that way, is it used as a garnish or an ingredient? I don't know. I think that's up for interpretation there. Another piece of that as well is when you take, you can take, you can do this for anything really, but you can take a sugar cube and put some absinthe on top of it and set it on fire or just completely let it melt. In that way, is it used as an ingredient or a garnish? I don't know. I think that's up for debate. And the last part there just says illegal. And like, there's this rumor that, that or like this myth or whatever, that absinthe was made illegal because of like the hallucinogenic properties of wormwood. But I think that's completely false. 
So I want to say that this does not actually describe absinthe. I don't know if absinthe would ever actually outlaw it, and if it was, this card is about to correct me for all intents and purposes. Ugh. Kynar for net bitter stuffs is more than awesome. Expanding on the a comment about the Kynar scream earlier, I assume garnish equals float. Yeah, I think that there are so many different ways to take the term garnish that if garnish is the answer here, I I got some fisticuffs. Like I want to argue about that because I don't think that you're using the term correctly there. So my answer is going to be illegal. I don't think absinthe was ever actually illegal. I think that's false. See a garnish. All right, I need to fight somebody here. I just, just we we collectively had described at least four ways. For absinthe to be used as a garnish or ingredient up for the bite. But let's see. The card gets a chance to rebuttal. This is apparently a wrong answer on my part. So I will I will be the first one to mark this as apparently a loss on my part. But garnish. Often retur referred to as the green muse or the green fairy. Absinthe was once a popular drink among famous artists and writers like Degas. Hemingway and Van Gogh, who repeatedly cut off his ear while under the influence, distilled from the wormwood plant, absinthe reportedly caused hallucinations, insanity, and death. Many countries outlawed it around 1915, and today, some allow a safe version to be sold. Evidently, many countries outlawed it. Okay, so apparently, so, so, I was thinking from an American standpoint, all I know about American history with absinthe, I don't know if we ever actually outlawed it. I could be wrong there too, but evidently, it says that a garnish is not a thing for absinthe. Also, it's been legal since like the mid 2000s. What? So it's again, I, I I am young. I don't know much about what happened in the world before the year 2000. So I guess you know maybe this is just my it's my generational mindset that's uh that's uh not make me not do so well. That's a wrong answer in my book. How many questions have we answered so far? We are at 11 right now. And seven of those were answered correctly. So all things considered, we're about at a... I'm not doing so well in this test so far, I guess. I'm not doing very well at all. Let's do another one. I say as I take a... Let me, let me grab myself some water real quick. I don't actually have a water glass over here. I think I left it on the table. I'm gonna grab that. Oh, wait, wait. It's cool. I can walk across the room, and my voice can still be heard from the distance because of the microphone that is wireless. Hopefully the fidelity is okay. I hope. At least in the U.S., things are legal. Absolutely true there. It's a shame that I can't get more absinthe. I, I recall I've had some fun experiences with absinthe, both in my personal life and in my familial life. My younger brother likes absinthe. My buddy who's in the Navy likes absinthe. I like absinthe. This mic, live sounds, life mic sounds good. Excellent. I don't know whether this is an improvement or not on the other microphone. It's a little less, I just realized that it, whoops, I dropped my die on the floor. I just realized that a three band equalizer is a filter that you can add in OBS and it kind of, it, it's a correct, it, it corrects the quality of the microphone to make it how you want it to sound. And I have yet to experiment with that on the other microphone over here, but I did just experiment. It took me, it's five minutes for this microphone here. You know, I'm pretty good. Next category is three. We're going back to lingo again. This one seems to keep on coming up. It's great. We occasionally get a high-pitched zip, but it's solid. Maybe I need to put like a high pit. Yeah, I think I think I did notice that as well. I wonder if uh, I should probably. Uh, okay, so that's that's definitely a thing. Noted. Very noted. Very noted indeed. Kirsch, Frambois, and Poire Williams are all vodkas, eau de vies, schnapps, or mixed drinks. So when we were about 40-ish minutes ago, I was specifically talking about this card. I haven't looked at many of the cards, but I learned about Kirsch. Kirschwasser being an O to V from this card. I know the answer is B, so I'm gonna flip it over and prove that, and I will read it, but I'm not gonna consider this a, a correct answer. I cheated for this one. I will not consider it a correct answer. I am, a, I am an honorable individual. O de V, which means water of life in French, is the classification for clear liquors distilled from various fermented fruit juices. Kirsch comes from cherries, from bois, from raspberries, and Poire Williams from pears. The best brands of Poire Williams has an entire pear inside of the bottle, which is managed by fastening the bottle over the embryonic fruit on the tree and letting the pear grow right inside. That is really cool. I didn't know about that. That's cool. I will put that back at the bottom of the pile. I do not consider that a question that I should be getting right over here. This is indeed a win-win indeed. All right, next question. Two, ingredients. From the ingredients pile, the playoff punch is similar to the pineapple version of what drink? The pineapple version of what drink? 
Now think about that for a second. A pineapple drink that I'm pineapple drinks that I'm aware of. I'm aware of a variation on. I think I'm aware of cocktails like the Bay Breeze. I believe the Bay Breeze is pineapple juice, cranberry juice, and vodka, um, as opposed to like say, or maybe that's a Sea Breeze. There's a Bay Breeze and there's a Sea Breeze. One of them uses grapefruit juice and one of them uses pineapple juice. Maybe this is a play on that. Playoff punch. A punch. What punch uses? Hmm. I don't actually know too much that uses pineapple juice specifically. So I think what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to get a little bit more context. I have my recipe book, and I would consider this a more or less open-ish book test. Open-ish book. I'll pull my recipe keeper. I am only going to utilize the resources that I have readily available. That means cocktail books, cocktail or bottles of spirits, and my own recipe notes. Let's see what else in here contains pineapple. A little bit of research. We'll learn a little thing or two. Pineapple Express. Let's see which one of these seem like cocktails that would have variations. Or punches. Coffee, Azalea, Bayou, Bayou B, Big Boo, Bitter Tears, Busy Izzy, Bugs Drink, Candy Corn. There's a lot of stuff in here that calls for pineapple. My goodness. Oh, a pina colada might be one. You would use you would use that a pina colada, I think. El Presidente, I think, is a classic, is it? No, 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 no. Maybe it is. What does that have? White rum. Pineapple juice and lime juice. Alright, that's a that's a thing. That's a thing, apparently. Oh, whoops. Click the wrong button. Hmm. Prince of Wales. I'm not really getting any hints here, to be honest. I don't know what is a classic drink made with oh, uh, with pineapple juice. Oh, the zombie's in there, too. But this is specifically similar to the pineapple. Oh, wait. Similar to the pineapple version of what drink? Oh, oh, oh as in... As in the punch itself has pineapple juice in it, but it is similar to another type of drink, except you you put pineapple juice in it. Okay, so what if I look up, what if I look up punch on here? If I do punch, maybe I'll find in my own personal notes, punch drinks. Blood punch, butterscotch, ginger passion, hocus pocus, Livor Livorno, what is Livorno? Ooh, espresso. That sounds tasty. Punch. Fish House Punch, which uses Jamaican rum, brandy, and pea, uh, various different types of brandy and rum with lime juice or, and or lemon juice. Fish House Punch seems pretty good. And then a bunch of things from Punch Drink. I know that's what that's searching for. So the only punch that I can think of that I guess you could take the ingredients and add pineapple juice to it would be like a Fish House Punch. I don't really know too many punches. I'd have to ask, uh, what is it, David Wondrich, I think, on that. I think he's the guy who did the punch truck. So um, I'm going to say, my answer is going to be Philadelphia Fish House Punch. I'm from Philadelphia here, so that's going to be my answer. I don't know if I'm correct. If I am, I'd be surprised. But I think this is an opportunity to learn something a little bit new. The playoff punch is similar to the pineapple version of what drink? The Mai Tai. The playoff punch was created to celebrate the New York Yankees' successful 2009 bid to get into the playoffs. The recipe calls for two-thirds parts golden rum, one part white rum, one-third a part orange liqueur, one-three-quarters parts pineapple juice, half lime, one-three-quarters parts orange juice, and two dashes of grenadine. I did not know that whatsoever. That is new in, in, uh, that's new info to me. And along with that, what I want to say is this would be the time where we can make a... Uh, like a, make the cocktail ourselves, the Mai Tai in this case, have, or the playoff punch. However, I specifically thought to myself, I know I'm out of pineapple juice and I don't have any. Otherwise, because I was going to go to the store and buy that, and I didn't go to the store and buy pineapple juice, so I don't actually have any pineapple juice this evening. Unless I have a spare container around here. If I do, we're making it. Excuse me, I sift around the back of the bar. It is a total mess back here. No, there's no pineapple juice. <laughs> the closest thing I have to pineapple juice right now is this pineapple coconut energy drink. Don't ask me why I have that behind my bar. Oh, that's so funny. Buzz clunk clunk clunk. Annotated sound effects. We've got close. Ca Apparently, you can close caption on OBS. That's cool. I don't know exactly how to do that though. But I don't have pineapple juice, unfortunately. Otherwise, it make a uh, make a playoff punch. But I guess we have the ingredients for it. So if y'all don't mind, I'm actually gonna add this recipe to the recipe book because I didn't know about that. This is kind of cool. So we'll uh, we'll go through the process to get. If 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 you'd like to join, we'll go through the recipe of adding 
this this new recipe. So I have first what I'll do is I'll add a photo of this book so I know where the know where it came from. Oh, actually, this came from a oh NMR distribution is probably who made the actual game itself. That's probably what that is. All right, we'll put that put that up to the come on come on. There we go. There we go. There we go. Coolio. So I have that as a picture now. It's called Playoff Punch. Playoff? Nope, that's the wrong column. Playoff Punch. I can use my voice to do things. That's fun. Source from, what was it? Mixed Drinks Smarts. Nope. Mixed Drinks Smarts. Maybe at some point this will become a part of a bar stream. It's technically a variation on the Mai Tai, right? Nope, I'm still recording my voice. Stop that. Oops, mixed drinks. Consumption. Oh, I've still got that red apple martini back here. Mmm. Oh, thank you, Monsieur De Rats. I appreciate that. Oh my goodness. Mixed drinks. Uh smarts. Smarts. Card game trivia? Card game trivia? I'm gonna add that in the Rifts and Variations theme because that's that's what it seems like to me. It's if it's a variation on the Mai Tai, and I'll add that as a note. A variation on the Mai Tai. It is a very Mai Tai drink, an excellent observation indeed. And apparently what we have to do here is we have to add, let's see, I wonder if I can just do this all with my voice. That'll be so easy. And also I realized they're giving thirds of part they're giving thirds of parts. So I think that's supposed to translate to ounces. Two thirds of an ounce of golden rum. One ounce of white rum. One third of an ounce of orange liqueur. One and three quarters of an ounce of orange juice. Where was I? No, never mind. <laughs> it's pineapple juice. <laughs> I got lost for a second. Pineapple. Pineapple juice. What was the last part? Well, let's see. The, the, the pineapple juice. Half a lime. Or it's juice? Question mark. One three quarters parts orange juice. Whoops. One and three quarters and that's supposed to be an ounce i'm doing it in ounces that makes sense to, that makes the most sense to me and then what is it two dashes of grenadine it ain't pretty but it's a recipe and what do we do we just put it all together i it has no instructions on how to make it but i would probably put that over like uh i don't know i feel like what i would do is i would put that with uh with some crushed ice a bunch, a really complicated garnish with like pineapple fronds and stuff. Um, well, I, well, actually, yeah, it's got pineapple juice in it, so I feel like you would garnish that. Well, I'm gonna add my notes there for the uh, potential garnish. I'm gonna say garnish it with pineapple fronds. That just seems right. Pineapple fronds. We discovered a new recipe together, but we got the question wrong. So that's that's a that's a wrong answer. Actually, did I mark that as a wrong answer on my board yet? That's five now. That is five. Okay. It is now seven correct answers for me and five incorrect answers. I'm getting dumber as the stream goes on. Beginner's luck, I guess, in the very beginning. I'll take it. Honestly, I'm actually happy to see that I'm getting most of these things wrong. That just means that I got room to learn. Three, we're going back to lingo again. Lingo, lingo, lingo. True or false? Serving drinks neat means making sure they don't spill. No, it means to serve them without ice. So false. While you might impress your guests with your clean serving style, neat actually refers to serving a drink without ice, water, or mixer. Oh. Oh, okay. That makes sense. With no ice, water, or mixer. When I think, when I think of neat, I just think of pouring it out, just, just pour it out of the bottle. And into the glass. That, that's, I'd say we got that correct there. On the other hand, asking for a drink straight up or straight or just up means you'll get a mixed drink that may include mixers or water, but is always shaken or stirred with ice before being strained into a glass. 
on the rocks means you want your drink served over ice. So they're saying here that Neats is without anything in it, naturally. You don't put any ice in there, no water in there, no mixer in there. If you put mixer in there, it's not just whiskey anymore. It's whiskey plus an ingredient. They're saying here when you get it something straight up or straight or just up, serving something up is including things but shaken or stirred with ice before a strain. So if you serve something up, it just has no ice in it. Put it on the rocks, put ice in it. You gotta shake or stir it first. It's cool. Up would be like how you get a Manhattan. Yeah, makes sense. Actually, it was interesting. I was thinking about the term up before the stream started and I didn't know what that meant. So I've actually learned what up meant this time because of this book, because of these cards here. That's advantageous. I'm, gl I'm, I'm glad about that. I'm glad that we learned something about that. That's how More Than Awesome likes his whiskey. Very good. We got that answer correct. That's, a, that's another point. I'm getting a little smarter again. As a man who prides himself on his massive brain and intelligence, or at least perceived intelligence, I'm feeling better about myself now. All right. Next question. Section three. It's back to lingo again. There's just a lot of lingo questions. Like, tons of them. The proof level on a bottle of alcohol refers to its purity, strength, weight, or legal status. I, I love the idea that proof in this case, or at least one of the answers, is like proof as in proof of ID. Legality. It's not by weight. It's by volumes, first of all. It's alcohol by volume. If you have something that is 40% proof, 40% alcohol by volume, it is 80 proof. The maximum proof alcohol can be is 200 because you double it. So I think in that case, it would be strength as, as in like the strength of the drink that you're about to, about to consume. Strength, B, strength. When a bottle is labeled as 75 proof, it means that the liquor within contains 35% alcohol by volume, but 35 times two is 70. The remaining 65% is usually water. In the United States, the proof number is always double the amount of alcohol. Other alcohols like beer and wine label their bottles with the alcoholic percentages rather than the proof. So a bottle of wine that is 13.5% alcohol would shake to about 27 proof. They did their, they did their math wrong. 37.5%. This, this is about cocktail mixology and mixed drinks knowledge, not mathematics. We gotta do the, the mathematics knowledge ourselves, naturally. All right. So that was an easy one. Mark that one. Some of, the, some of these are too easy. I find that the more the more correct answers I have or the low answers, the more cocky I get. So let's see, just see, see how cocky tail I can get with another question. Four, a wild card question. I also told myself that I wanted to go through this entire drink deck of questions and stuff, but I don't think any one of the, like, I still have, this is, let's see, the lingo deck is the one that we've been pulling through the most of, and this is this is, this is is how thick we have left. So that's definitely not gonna happen. We're approaching an hour and 45 minutes. So I wanna see at least get another cocktail out of this, so we'll see. True or false, wild card. When Rick says, here's looking at you, kid, in the film Casablanca, he, is, he and Ilsa drink champagne. Again, not really a big movie guy. I've never watched Casablanca. Casablanca, however you pronounce it. I mean, the only thing that I know about Casablanca is that one scene that they had in the great movie ride in um, Hollywood Studios in Disney World. But they were standing in front of a plane and there was no alcohol to be found. Were they drinking champagne? Let me think. In a movie like that, would they be drinking champagne? Maybe. I'm gonna say no. Well, I mean, well, maybe it's a yes because like, I don't know how movies were like back then. I've never watched it. If anybody, Casablanca's got like the cool little like zoot suits and stuff like that. They got the fancy like hats and fedoras and whatever. I would think if they were doing anything, they could be drinking champagne. It's about the context of the question, right? Maybe? Or it could be a trick question. I'm gonna say yeah, why not? I don't know enough about Casablanca to even continue on this train of thought. Okay, but true, we're drinking champagne. Here's looking at you, kid. It's like a cheers, it's like cheers, you know? We're cheers with the glass. True. 
Rick pours out two glasses of plain champagne in that iconic scene that I have absolutely no knowledge of. However, Paul Henry's character, Laszlo, orders a champagne cocktail at Rick's bar. This drink is whipped up simply by dropping a bitter soaked sugar cube in a glass of dry champagne. For some mystifying reason, champagne cocktails have recently gained the reputation as being a hooker's drink. Interesting. I didn't know about that one whatsoever. Oh, Bloated said yes! Boom, you can get champagne on a plane. It's black and white. Rick has a hat. Black and white, Rick has a hat. Champagne is often a yellowish color. I don't see color in that. Nice job there. Oh, blo Bloated. You're up on the board now. You got an answer correct. Nice job there. Bloated. So far, one question correct for Bloated. Very nice, very nice, sir. And that's another technical correct answer for me, although I completely guessed on that one, and I don't know if I can take that with uh, with full confidence. Makes me feel sad. Makes me sad indeed. Nice job there, sir. This is a cheers. A cheers for you. This is red apple martini that is very good. I'm gonna finish this entire thing. A win is a win is a win is a win. This is true. Can't slice it any other way. I'll take that. Cheers indeed. All right, back to the other angle. We'll see what question comes next. This is fun so far. I like learning new things, especially if we're surrounded by people who care. Two, ingredients. The next question that we have here is, what ingredients are used to make a godfather mixed drink? So a godfather is a part of a family of drinks, like a little family of godfather, godmother, and I think the other one in that chain is the American Trilogy is another cocktail, I believe, all of them use cognac or brandy. And I want to say the Godfather uses a cognac. Cognac is one of the ingredients. The other ingredient though, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of blanking on right now. I think an American I think an American trilogy, I was just reading an article on this the other day, uses Applejack, I know, as the brand as the brandy in this case. And two other things. There might be like vermouth in there. And something else perchance. Oh my gosh. And the godmother. I'm trying to Oh, the godmother, I think, uses amaretto. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think amaretto is the other piece there. I want to say that a godfather is made using cognac and amaretto. That might be the two. I think it's just a two-ingredient thing there. I think I'm not so sure. I remember the God. The Godfather is a drink that I remember because when I did take the small number of bartending classes that I took, the, they, they had a whole like drink book. And one of the ones that I remember seeing that book is a Godfather, a Godmother, and a Great American Trilogy, which I think were all in the same like section of the book. So in my brain, they're in the same physical location. Let's see if that pays off. I know that there's cognac in there. I'm like 95% certain that cognac is one of the ingredients. Amaretto, I'm a little less on. That might be only the godmother. But I'm trying to think what else goes with that anyway, and I'm honestly having a hard time with it. So, but if I can at least get the godfather in there, I'll feel, or the, the cognac in there, I'll feel good about that. And so, what isn't a godfather? And if it's simple enough, we'll make one for ourselves. I'll try it. Scotch whiskey in amaretto. I was incorrect about the cognac. The Godfather is made up of equal parts Scotch whiskey and amaretto, or 3.5 centiliters of each. Nice. And is served on the rocks. Bourbon can be used instead of sco uh, uh, Scotch. There are a number of variations of the drink. For example, the Godmother uses vodka. The French, con the French Connection was the other one. Uses cognac, and the Godchild uses cream. There we go. Otter says amaretto, and I'll add whiskey. It was close. It was close with the scotch there. It was very close. But it seems that we're both technically incorrect on that. Oh, you know what? Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll take it. You know what? Bloated had a little bit of help and combined whiskey is an acceptable answer, I will say, as the, media as the mediator here. And so it was amaretto. That's a bloated. The bloated otter combo got that correct. That's, that's one more down. That's one more dumb question for Cameron over here. Um, but apparently, we can make a Godfather because it's equal parts of these concoction, of these little uh, ingredients here. So I'll take it. So we're gonna, that's what we're gonna make next. We're gonna create. It's not quite a Godfather because I do not have any Scotch whiskey. However, I do want to see what whiskey and amaretto taste like together. There's also the combination. So we have the Godfather, which is the Scotch whiskey, 
and the amaretto. The godmother, which is vodka and amaretto. Um, French Connection was cognac and amaretto. And then Godchild uses cream. Actually, you know what? My mind was on the cognac. So I think what I'm going to make is I'm going to make a French Connection because apparently that was the cocktail that I was thinking of. And I'm very, very curious about it. I kind of want to see how those flavors go well together. Amaretto and cream sounds like a nice one there. Ooh, yeah, with the, with, that was the Godchild there. Amaretto itself is just a just a delectable decor. Like, I don't know of anything that tastes bad that has amaretto in it. So I completely understand that one there. So let's see. I'm going to ask the machine whether we... Oh, you know what? I feel like a godfather is served either built over ice or otherwise. I, wa I wonder if I actually have notes on that. Let's see what the internet says. Actually, do I even have it in my collection? Let's see. French connection? No, but do I have a godfather? God. I have multiple instances of the godfather in my cocktail collection. What you do is you fill a mixing glass, add the scotch and amaretto for the godfather, and then you stir until well chilled. This is actually the one recipe I have from liquor.com says you use two ounces or 60 milliliters of the scotch or bourbon and a quarter of an ounce or about seven milliliters of amaretto. So it's not equal parts like this card said. Another recipe for the Godfather coming from the spruceeats.com says you use one and a half ounces or 44 milliliters of scotch and a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of amaretto. Godmother, also from the Spruce Eats, says the same proportions, but you have vodka instead. I'm doing the French connection and I want to see how it does with the equal parts, just like the card said. So we're going to see how that works. And what I'll do is I'll get myself a mixing glass and we'll get things started over here. The first thing that we'll need is some cognac. Cognac that I have down here is this bottle of Covassier V-Sop or something, or V-S, not V-Sop. I don't know what V-Sop means. I don't remember that. I'm gonna Google it. Cause I was literally, ta I was talking to somebody about cognac the other day and I was trying to figure out what bottle of cognac they had and they said it had V-Sop on it. V-Sop is very special, superior, old, pale. It's the youngest cognac in the blend. It must be four years old or otherwise. V-S, v I guess, is also very special. You've seen all of them, so like that. What do they all mean? V-S means very special, a.k.a. three stars. means the youngest cognac or amarnac in the blend must be a minimum of two years old. So this is apparently, at minimum, two years old cognac. The, young, the youngest blend, if this happens to be a blend. Cavassier says... V.S. is the joyful introduction to the signature Covassier Masson style. Spring blossoms with notes of apple, pear, grapefruit, and a fresh oaky finish. A vivid blend of Fins Bois, Fins Bois and Petit Champagne with a touch of Bones Bois. Bones Bois? Delicately blended. Blended. V.S. Minimum of two years for the youngest cognac in the blend. We're going to need two equal parts of it. I'm going to add an ounce of each to a glass with a bit of ice, and then I'll put that into a coupe glass. I think that'll be just fine. I'll go out and grab myself a big old ice cube, pop that into my stirring apparatus, and we move things on from there. Here's my ice into the glass. We'll grab one of my jiggers from over here and see how this goes. So we're going to add equal parts in this case. Actually, you know, it seems uh, the, um, the total volumetric amount that I saw from the recipes I had earlier were all totaling up to, oh, two ounces. So yeah, never mind. I stand by that. One full ounce of our cognac in this case. Oh, wait, 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 before I move on, before I move on, this is not a red apple martini anymore. We're making a French connection. That's what we're doing now. I also forgot to erase this from earlier, but that's okay. I'd blame other people for not reminding me, but that's just rude. It's my fault. I take full responsibility for it, guys. No problem, that's all on me. But this one's called French connection. And there are many ways to connect the French, or make the connection that is French. But in this case, I'm doing it equal parts. I'm putting, in that case, equal parts French and equal parts Italian, I guess? I'm, I'm Italian, for the most part. I got some German in there, too. Back where we really left off, then. One full ounce, about 30 milliliters of your cognac of choice. Mine is a V.S. Covassier. Spilling a little bit, but we good. We absolutely good. And then the next ingredient we'll add is our amaretto. And come to think of it, if cognac is French, from the cognac region of France maybe, 
Amaretto is, I believe, Italian. So this really is the connection. I am the Italian one, and then the French is the cognac. Very cool. Very nice indeed. I'll put that away, but a little, little French connection. This is actually kind of fun. I was a little fr afraid that we wouldn't be able to make too many drinks this evening because I just wouldn't have the ingredients prepared. But as it turns out, apparently, this, uh, this bar is a little more well-stocked than I give it credit for sometimes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our equal parts of our cognac and amaretto and we're going to give that a stir. And then we will strain that into a glass. I'm going to find one of my beautiful coupe glasses. And we'll take a little bit of a... Take a sip. It smells really good right now. I'm getting like notes of like very light fruit, like an apple or something. And of course, the Lazzaroni Amaretto. Although the apple that I'm getting might actually be from the red apple martini that's on my right hand side. Your left hand side, from the other angle, cocktail angle. I'd say that's stirred enough. Put that down. We'll grab myself a coupe glass. First one from here. I got this old guy here. Adjust our angle just a tad. We'll see how that goes. How'd it go? Oh, I guessed on that. Excellent. That's fine by me. Now what I'll do is I'll take my little, um, take my julep strainer, put that over top, make sure that I only get the liquid that I am that I'm specifically wanting for. There we go. Our little, our little French connection. And with equal parts, cognac and amaretto. Quite simple indeed. It's got a nice brown color to it. I like that. It appears that the Discord bot is not, or sorry, the chat bot is not working. So in the, in the expectation that it still hasn't gotten its shit together, for taking screenshots i will i will do the honors of posting to the discord as well for those who may want to see it from my angle and this one was called a french connection french connection awesome oh did that not sent no yeah, it did totally did excellent that looks pretty good but how does it smell this is the most I feel like the most important question that I come across in these bar streams when we make the when we make the drinks is just how does it smell? Because that's what I really want to know. I also want to know how it tastes. Hmm. Super duper amaretto y. There's a little bit of a I don't know, there's almost like almost a citrus I'm getting there. Something something lighter, something lighter than amaretto in there. And maybe it's a fruity component of the cognac. Mm, that's so pleasant. Oh. Hmm. You just can't go wrong with amaretto. You just can't. It tastes so good. It's like, it's a very, very amaretto forward drink. However, it's taking on components of the cognac that I really wasn't expecting. The back of the bottle said something like, I wouldn't even say, I don't even know. I'm not even going to try to paraphrase. The back of the bottle, okay, well, actually, before I even read the back of the bottle, what I'm getting is almost like, it, it, it's the apple. I'm still getting the apple notes there, but I'm getting the amaretto as well. But the amaretto is manifesting more as like a caramelly sweet flavor, so this almost tastes like a caramel apple to me. The back of this bottle says apple, pear, grapefruit, and fresh oak. And if there's anything, I don't know. I'm getting apple components. Apple and pear from this. Actually, there's a little bit of pear on the end now. Definitely, definitely pear. Specifically, like a green pear, not the red pears. I've tried both of them before. They're not totally different. I don't know why I'm picking one. I just kind of pulled it out of the air. But it almost tastes like a caramel apple. Yeah, that is very tasty. It's a little more. It's a little more on the short side. So it's not as I, I'd say that this has a very similar sweetness level to Negronis that I usually enjoy, but no bitterness like at all. This is a very, very sweet beverage, at least in this proportion. And this proportion being equal parts of your amaretto 
to your cognac in this case. If you're going to make a Godfather, instead of your cognac, you would use a Scotch whiskey, which I would think would have a little more of a smoky component to it, a little more bite, almost a little varnishy, at least from the Scotch whiskeys I've had in the past. If you were to do a Godmother, you would use vodka, so it would be a bit more on the amaretto side. Um, a little bit less on the other flavors. So I don't know if you get as many fruity components there as you do with the cognac as I'm experiencing right now. There was also the Godchild, which combines the amaretto and the cream, a heavy cream together, which I feel like would just taste amazing. I would even think I want to try a Godchild combined instead of just like with heavy cream or half and half, but with a different type of cream liqueur. Something like, something like, um, oh, the idea I'm getting, the idea I'm getting right now is you're going to take Apple moonshine, apple pie moonshine, Irish cream, just a little bit of Irish cream, and amaretto, and put that together. And I don't know, it's not a godchild or anything like that. I, I'd call that, if I had to put the god anything, god's land, I don't know, America, the land that, in god we trust, because uh, it's on the American dollar bill, and apples are American. I'll call that one in god we trust. I'm in that right now. Very tasty. And it's an apple version of the godfather and stuff. You know, like, because New York, the Big Apple, you know, it's, it's what it's all about. It's pretty good. I, I really like that. Honestly, anything with amaretto. Amaretto goes so fast in this house. I think of the things that go fastest at this bar, it's amaretto, because Anna and I both like amaretto drinks. Um, Campari goes pretty fast, and sweet vermouth. Sweet vermouth because I buy the little bottles and I like to drink the Negronis. Campari, because I like to drink the Negronis and Boulevardiers and stuff. So that, that makes sense there. Let me grab myself a coaster. I'll put that back here. And uh, let's see, we're around the two-ish hour mark. And so I think what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that we get through at least one more cocktail through these cards here. Um, I'm having fun with this. So we'll continue, we'll continue a bit longer. I'll admit, uh, in the, for the sake of full transparency, it's been a bit of a rough week for me so far. I've been a little burnt out with the cocktail stuff, so I was taking it a little bit easier this time, but I'm having a lot of fun with this as well. We're learning a little bit here, adding a couple new recipes, doing a little bit of exploration. I'm having a lot of fun. Well, thank you all for joining me for this. And of course, understanding that whew, we can't just be all up here all the time. We would burn ourselves out, it's wild. Very nice, says Pleb. Oh, thank you kindly, sir. Thank you kindly. How are you, sir, Pleb? How are you? If I were to offer, I wish I, honestly, every single time somebody pops in after a while, I want to be like, here, take this drink. It's freshly made. But I realize it's been up against my mouth and there's this camera in between and I can't, I can't eh, take this. I can't do that. It just, it just does not work that way, seriously. Brad says, I like the trivia aspect. Also, tons of things suck. Don't burn out. Totally. Tonight's stream has melted all my angry from work. I'm glad that I... <laughs> I need to take this lightly, but I'm glad that I, I wasn't the only person angry at work today. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, so I'm going to go back to... At least set my camera angle up a little bit, long, a little bit better over here. We'll try to not... To, we might fight with it again to uh, try not to get things upside down. And we'll continue with a little more trivia, trivia time, trivia time. Is this upside down? Yep. How about if I do this? Okay. Good so far. Good so far. Okay. I'm at the bottom. Yes. Okay. We are good. That was the last, that was the last one we got there. Scotch whiskey and amaretto. I got that wrong. I was wrong. I was very, 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 very wrong. Pleb says, good. Life has been hectic. Sorry I couldn't pop in sooner. How have you been? Oh, Pleb, you have absolutely no reason to apologize. Actually, let me thank you for popping in at all. It's always good to see a friendly face, or rather a friendly username in this case. Y you know? How have things been? Busy. Oh my gosh, things have been busy around here. But not without its upsides. I will say that at the very least. All right. Whoa, I threw my... I threw my die off the bar. <laughs> Things are going great around here. I'm throwing shit around. I'm an absolute belligerent mess. Uh, let me go into my die bag. Uh, I have an entire bag of dice. And let me pour, pour, pull another D4 out of here. There must be more. Actually, I'm going to do a D8. Nope, it's a D10. Yeah, we'll do a D10. Uh, evens. Oh, let's see. Odds. Oh, no, it has to be divisible by four. Oh, I can't use a D10. That's not evenly divisible by four. I'm wrong there. I'm gonna pour out the dice again. Come on, get in there. Get it in there. There's gotta be at least a D4 in there somewhere. D4? D4? 
D4, D4, D4. There you are. There, yep, yep, there you are. D4. There we go. I'm going to keep that guy. I'm going to put all the other ones away. I feel it, says Pleb. Programming has been hectic, and I got my first taste at work with firmware, and holy dude, what language you programming in? Are we talking like embedded C and stuff like that? Because if so, hit me up. That is my GIF. Embedded Mizra C is my jam. Um, actually, if, if, we're, if, we're talk, if we're talking tech stuff, I freaking love talking about tech. So if I go on a ramp, if I go on an absolute tangent here, I'm just not even gonna, well, we gotta get back to trivia eventually. So my tangent can't be that long. I've been experimenting with reverse engineering recently using a program called Ghidra, trying to reverse engineer ELF libraries and SO files that are in Android apps. <sighs> if you got tingles like I just did, then we are of the same breed, my friend. Because that stuff is so, so cool. And my God, what a learning curve. In any case, fun stuff. Anyway, uh, what's our next cocktail uh, type of question? I got a three. Three is lingo. It's, it's Jesus, it's more lingo. It's all lingo here. My goodness gracious. What, what am I? Okay, this is legible, right? That is correct? Yes, it is indeed. And here I am sitting back around nerdy and back-end accounting software. Dude, dude, we're all, we're all nerds together. It's good stuff. Lingo question. Bitters are A, an herb-infused alcohol. B, an olive garnish. C, a Worcestershire sauce. Worcester. Worcestershire. Or a character from South Park. It's herb-infused alcohol. Like Angostura, you know? Herb-infused alcohol. I love that. A character from South Park. Bitters? I think a lot of the characters from South Park are bitter. Herb-infused alcohol. That was my answer. If it wasn't obvious from that, I'll take that win. Although there are many flavors of aromatic bitters swirling around, most bitters are a concoction of spices, roots, citrus, botanicals, and alcohol. The popular Trinidadian Angostura bitters, which I've got a bottle of right here, naturally, for context. Um, let's do... Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is the actual... Oh, the camera's... Ah, there we go. I got a couple of different bitters. I got many different bitters. Um, have a spicy herbal flavor and pishad bitters. Pishad bitters looks like this because I have those as well, naturally. We're well equipped, bar over here. This is your Angostura. This is your pishads because they're labeled that way. Uh, pishad bitters hailing from New Orleans have a cherry anise flavor. Like salt, bitters enhance flavors. You can add bitters to so many classic cocktails like Manhattans and Americanos and Negronis or otherwise old fashions. It's wild how it can completely transform the drink in general. Very, very good there. That's a correct answer for me. Nice job, Cam. Um, we're up to, um, I'll put another one on there. I got 11 correct answers now. Very, very good. Hmm. It actually feel, I missed a couple of comments there. Oh my goodness. Oh, so Pleb is saying, it actually is. I may have to hit, to hit you up later because those libraries have us working on it and saying, oh, absolutely. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to tackle that with you. Answer D kills you. Which was the answer D again? That was the, was the South Park one. It's, it's got to be A. Oh, Pleb answered. Yeah, oh, you got the answer correct. Pleb stash is in the game. Pleb. Pleb's got a correct answer so far. Right now, and this is not a competition. I've been answering these questions for the past two hours now, so I obviously have the upper hand. But we've got Bloated in, Bloated Dead Rats, and the Otter Couple up at two right now. Pleb is at a one right now. You guys are so smart. Right now, you guys are all at 100% correct rate, which is good compared to mine. I'm, um, I'm suffering a little bit. But that Angus store for the Trinidad Sour, I, I was actually, I was talking to one of my... I was talking to my friend the other day. Oh my God, it was Pepper. I was talking to Pepper the other day about, she was like, I want a drink that's a little more bitters for it, a little more dry, a little more flavorful with like cinnamon component. And I was like, we could do a Trinidad Sour. She was like, what's a Trinidad Sour? I was like, well, it uses an entire ounce of this bottle of Angostura here. She's like, oh, I don't want to do that. It's okay. <laughs> you have to be ready and willing to go for the Trinidad Sour. I haven't had one in a while. The last thing I did with, oh, the last thing I did with a bunch of, Angostura bitters in it was this cocktail called Johan Goes to Mexico, and it was uh, it was kind of like a Trinidad Sour, like the answer to the Trinidad Sour, but it used mezcal instead. And um, I am out of mezcal. I haven't gone back to the store to get more. Good stuff, though. Very, very good stuff. All right, what's next on the list? Back to more cocktail trivia. I actually have no idea when I plan to stop this stream. I, I'm not gonna go. I think I won't go past three hours. I have to put a limit on this somehow. Otherwise, I'll be going all night. And I gotta work in the morning. Four, 
is a wild card category. We'll take from our side. The question is, I don't, somehow, oh, anyway. True or false, there has been a worm in tequila for centuries. Centuries? I feel like this is a history-based question. And I'm not very good with history. I have to think, the, the only, the, the first time that I saw a worm in tequila was watching an episode of George Lopez, a, a comedy show starring, you guessed it, George Lopez, the comedian, and his family. I don't know if it was his real family or not, but it was a, it was a funny show. I watched that while my mother was working like a late night like pharmacy job, I think, or while she was still going to school. And I remember w like staying up till like one to two o'clock in the morning, little like 12 year old me, playing with Mega Bloks and watching George Lopez. And I remember the episode with the worm specifically because George Lopez's, I think, uh, father-in-law or something, like he, like George Lopez drinks the worm or something and then hallucinates a dream. And then his father-in-law like comes up in a worm costume and it's, it's really weird, like a fever dream for a child of my age at that time. But it has to do with the worm. I don't really know what the context of the worm is at the bottom of uh, at the bottom of tequila. So my guess is it's only been there because it's tradition. And if it's, if it's a tradition, I feel like it's been around for a long time. Maybe not centuries. If this thing gets me on a technicality where it's like, well, technically it hasn't only been around for 180 years, so it's not centuries, but it is decades. I'll be bothered. And I will take an aggressive sip of a cocktail to show my botherness. I'm going to say true. Why not? I, we only have everything that we only have everything to gain here, and the thing that we gain here is knowledge. False. Alrighty then. Cool. All right. The drink that started this tradition was mezcal, and rather than a worm, it contained the caterpillar of a gusano butterfly. When the Spanish conquistadors ran out of brandy, they started to distill agave. Today, four alcoholic beverages, tequila, mezcal, soto, and bacanora, are all distilled in Mexico from the blue agave plant. Actually, there's, for mezcal, we learned in the mezcal and tequila book, it's not necessarily blue Weber agave. It can be, though, specifically for tequila. That's interesting, though. So the worm was for mezcal specifically, and there are other types of, uh, a, I guess, agave distillates that I wasn't aware of. That's cool. I feel like this is some BS marketing strategy. Well, apparently, it came from some tradition for mezcal. That's interesting. I didn't know about... Um, Soto, Soto, Sotol, or Bacanora? I'm gonna guess that's pronounced Bacanora, Boca, Bacanora, is my guess there. So let me write that down. Bacanora, Bacanora. And what else do we got? Sotol. And those are other agave spirits. I've learned something new today. Very cool indeed. But I totally got that wrong. Whoop, whoa. Wrong column, which means that's another one down. So far, I uh, seven seven wrong and eleven correct. I am proving myself to be a little less knowledgeable than I thought I was, which is okay. I mean, I think I more or less openly state that I am a young fledgling mixologist. So there's a lot of stuff out there that I don't know, and I'm fully aware of that. Instead, what it does, it is ins it, it's it inspires me to learn more naturally. What's the next question? Like, uh, what's question? Question though. The question theme is a. You got a two, so it's going to be on ingredients again. Maybe we have another cocktail coming up. Midori comes from which country? Italy, France, Japan, or New Zealand? Ah, uh, Midori is green in Japanese for the green Midori melon. C. Japan. It's my final answer. Japan, all right. This bright green liqueur, oh, actually, let's go grab some Midori now that we're talking about Midori, right? This is Midori, green liqueur. This is Midori, tall green bottle here. Uh, it's sometimes added to margaritas to intensify the color and also to put a new twist on the usual lime tequila mixture. Midori brings mixed drinks alive with its fresh honeydew melon flavor. You can also find it mixed with vodka, pineapple juice, cranberry juice, and chambord, black raspberry liqueur, in one of the many variations of sex on the beach. It's kind of cool, actually. Midori is so good. Honestly, it says it's infused with Japanese melons, but it just kind of tastes like sweetness. It's almost cotton candy-like. And like maybe a Midori melon actually tastes like that, 
but I have absolutely no experience to back that up. Instead, all I have is the interwebs to tell me. So, that's another one. Very good, y'all. Very good, y'all. Let's move on. Let me put this Midori away, and we'll move on to another question for the evening. I like that the bottle has the texture of the Japanese melon. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Does it really? Wait, Rich, what do you know about Japanese melons? Oh, because, oh, you know, I see what Rich is saying there. Is that why the bottle's like that? Ooh, because I guess the melon itself, this, look at me feeling up a bottle on stream. Look at that. Isn't, isn't this cool? Look at this guy feeling this bottle. What's the texture like? Textured. What does it look like? Apparently the skin of a Japanese melon. I didn't even think about that. That's cool. That's cool. Thank you for that tidbit, Rich. Learning about the spirits that we drink and the bottles that we drink the spirits out of since, I don't know, whenever we started this show. That's cool. It's a great touch indeed. Dude, we love to see bottle. We like we love to see manufacturers putting in the, the extra, like the extra mile for something like that, for authenticity. What's the next question? I feel like I still learned something from that. Two. We're on to ingredients again. So the next question that we have is, a traditional shot glass of liquid is equal to one ounce or 30 milliliters, one and a half ounces or 44 milliliters, two ounces or 59 milliliters, or two and a half ounces, 74 milliliters. Whenever I measure out a shot glass, and when I say shot glass, I mean, let me, let me go into my drawer over here and grab, I mean this, this glass, this glass here from the top. That, this is the size of the shot glass I have. I am inclined to think that it is two ounces because from what I, what I can tell, all of these shot glasses are two ounces or at least a little shy or a little above depending on the make. Now I do have some other shot glasses over here, like this, this uh, square one, this rectangular one that I'm pretty sure is like two and a half ounces. I haven't specifically measured it out, but I know that you get more bang for your buck with this guy than you do with this guy. And these actually both came from a chess set that I got. And it was a shot chess set. Each chess on the each chess piece on the board, I guess it's technically checkers, was a shot. And every time you, you know, one of your checkers was captured, you would take a shot. And I've always felt bad for whoever was playing with the squares, because the squares, I believe, hold more alcohol because it's not as tapered at the bottom as it as it is with the cylindrical one over here. So whoever was on the square side better know how to play the game. So I'd say two ounces or about 59 milliliters for the shots. And the answer is B, one and a half ounces or 44 milliliters. Shot glasses are perfect for measuring ingredients for all your favorite mixed drinks. There are other smaller glasses too, called short shot or pony shots. Now, this is something I would like to put to the test to be perfectly honest, because I don't think that that's correct, at least not from my experiences. So let me adjust the angle real quick, and I, I wanna put this to the test. Uh, compared to these particular shot glasses here, I want to know which of these, how, how much each of these guys contain. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to take a bit of water, and I'm going to fill up to the brim each of these shot glasses. This is the square shot glass. I'm pouring a little bit of water, but that's okay. You're at the brim. Don't spill on the cards, Cam. Not a good idea. And I'll fill you up to the brim as well. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this into the two ounce side of my measuring majigger. And if I spill, this is my measuring majigger, this is the two side over here. If I spill, then it's, or, or get to the top. Well, actually, we'll, we'll look at it, we'll look at it. It says it's supposed to be one and a half ounces, and I'm not sure if y'all can see this, but inside of this container, there is a little ridge at the top of the container, at the top of the jigger. And that little ridge there marks one and a half ounces. I'm gonna see what happens. Hopefully I don't spill much. Hopefully I don't. Oh, okay. Okie dokie. So, I'm gonna try to get as good an angle on this as possible so everyone can see. I think I was actually a little wrong. So hopefully, that's coming across okay. But the top of this glass, guy here I can tell that we are a little we're actually a little above the line but my surface here isn't completely level so it actually looks like to the tip of 
this shot glass back here, it is one and a half ounces plus, which means it's not quite two ounces. Because what I just wanted to do is I wanted to fill it all the way up to the brim to see whether we get the two ounces. Now, just because of the geometry of this jigger here, there's more liquid at the top, like fraction of it than it is the rest of the container itself. So evidently, evidently, at least for a regular shot, it's not a full two ounces. So one and a half ounces feels correct there. Now I am still curious about the square shot glass because I want—I feel like that one's more than two ounces. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see. And I'll keep this one up close this time. This is my square over here. Let's see if I can. Oh yeah, it completely spills right over. So yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting to think that both of these shot glasses both came with the same chess set, tower checker set, and whoever. So the the idea is that one side plays with the square ones, and the other side plays with the the circular ones. So evidently, whoever's on the other side is not going to be a very good spot there, which is actually kind of interesting. So I, actually, I think when I was playing, when I was doing that stream with my dearest yesterday, I think we were measuring in shots. And I called each shot's two ounces. Good night. Oh, good night, my dearest. Right on command, too. My goodness. Have a wonderful night. I'll see you later. So one and a half, I was measuring every single shot as a proportion of two ounces. And apparently, I was a little incorrect about that. I'll take that. I will absolutely take that. I'll take the square side. Dude, I'll take the square side any day. If I'm playing checkers and losing, I don't know if I want to remember the game. That's a wrong answer for me. Wow. Oh. We're doing tally marks. So I have to tally things correctly. We learn something new every day, and every once in a while, I need a swift correction. All right, let me set this angle back up again. We'll go back to the cards. Many more things. This is actually really cool because it's not like the general flow of things usually. All right, I need to turn you around. Nope, I don't like that. Can we? Can we do? Nope, you're still upside down. What if I do this? Are you right side up now? Now you're right side up. Okie dokie. You as far over as we can. The perks of being your own cameraman, I guess. Alright, so that one? No good. I done did bad. Also, this side of the thing over here is getting a little... Oh. Oh, I have chalk on my fingers. I forgot about that. I'm gonna have to swap this out actually, or turn it around. There's one side of my mat getting a little wet. I don't get our cards wet. There we go. That's better. That's a little bit better. Okay, dokie. Bring on the box. And the box don't say Wild Card. We haven't really done a lot of drinks cards, all things considered. This question says: which of the following hardware would not be used to make mixed drinks? Option A, a pony. Option B, a cigar. Option C, a muddler. Option D, a jigger. Well, this is a jigger. This over here is a muddler. A pony or a cigar? I feel like a pony is a thing, but I don't know what that thing is. So I think I'm inclined to say that the, the answer here is a cigar. Although I have seen, I did see a video of somebody who stirred a drink on TikTok with a with a, with a, like a burnt out cigar. It was kind of gross. So in that way, it's a tool. But in my experience, I haven't used a cigar to use my to, to mix my own drinks. So I would say the cigar in that case is the one there. Because I feel like I've heard of a pony before. I mean, I feel like a pony in and in of itself is, it's like a phrase for a different type of thing. Although a cigar might be a different type of thing too. So my vote's on the cigar. And if there is such thing as a cigar out there for mixing cocktails, I, I want to know. Unless the smoker kit is considered a cigar, in which case I've learned a new term today. So let's see. A cigar, a pony, and a jigger are used to measure out mixed drink ingredients with a pony equaling one ounce and a jigger uh, measuring about a half, a half ounce. 
You can get a double-ended shot with a jigger on one side and a pony on the other. A muddler is a wooden dowel that comes in handy when grinding or muddling ingredients like mint leaves for a mint julep. Finally, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. I would, I, it would be interesting to see whether or not we could use a small horse to make cocktails with. Actually, apparently I've learned that the jigger, at least according to this, is this side, and a pony is this side. Although, I don't know, I don't know if I use that. Rich says it's a small horse, which I always use to mix my drinks. Dude, you live on like a state, you have like a stable or something? That is so awesome. Now, now I wonder, are your horses drinking alcohol? Because in which case, I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't know if I approve of these decisions here, Rich. In any case, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. So apparently a pony is actually a thing. It's a term that I wasn't, I just wasn't aware of. Learn something new every single day. On to the next question. We're about that. The, for me, it's about two hours and 30 ish minutes now. So I think what we'll do is we'll do like another like half ish hour of more trivia and stuff. And honestly, this could go on forever. There's still so much left of this that we haven't even done yet. So maybe this comes back. Maybe we do another trivia night sometime. That could be fun. Number four, we're going for another wild card question. Although eventually this thing of cards is gonna run out, so we gotta come up with better questions eventually. More questions. Where was the Mai Tai invented? Was it Maui, Hawaii, Palm Beach, Florida, Papiti, Tahiti, or Emeryville, California? I have literally no idea. Hmm. Well, a piece of me wants to believe that the Mai Tai comes from a place that seems more similar to its name. For example, Hawaii. I feel like Mai Tai sounds like a Hawaiian thing to say. I don't know, I, that could just be like my projecting in a, an uncouth way. But actually I think, I wonder if the Mai Tai was, was brought to light from the contributions of the cocktail community from people like Don the Beachcomber, which I know that, that's a whole like tiki drinks thing that I'm not super well versed in. So I'm not even gonna pretend to know that I know anything about it. But I don't know if, for example, if it was the Beachcomber or Trader, whatever his name is, Vic or Sam or whoever makes tiki drinks. I don't know where they were based out of. California seems like a thing. Florida seems like a thing. It could honestly have also been Hawaii. I want to take the easy. I want to take the easy way out and say that Maui, Hawaii, sounds similar to what I would think Mai Tai. Just sounds. It just. I just. It just sounds. I guess like like languagely, ethnically more similar. And again, this is probably a very stereotypical and myopic way of thinking about it. But it's all I got to go off of. So I'm gonna say. I'm gonna do Maui. Cause I don't know much about the history of, let's say if it's a tiki drink, it's a tiki drink, so I don't know what the history about it is. I'm gonna say Maui, Hawaii, and I'm expecting myself to be incorrect. Emeryville, California, all right. Please tell me the history behind this. In 1944, Victor Bergeron invented and shook up the very first Mai Tai, Trader Vic. At his famous Polynesian restaurant, the original Trader Vic's in Emeryville, California, you can now find popular lip puckering Mai Tais all over the world. They contain aged rum, curacao, lime juice, and orja, an almond flavored sugar syrup. I figured that it had to do something with wherever the person, Trader Vic in this case, happened to be mixing his cocktails at. So I will actually very happily say that I didn't know that one. And now I know the Mai Tai was made in Emeryville, California. I'll take that as a loss. I honestly, I'm okay with that. Moving on though. The next drink that we have, or rather the next cocktail. Whoa, I, I know where my brand's at. Next trivia question. The category is lingo. True or false? Mezcal is a brand name of tequila. No, it's a separate drink, false. False, mezcal or mezcal. 
is a variety of liqueur, liqueur under which tequila falls. Therefore, tequila is a kind of mezcal, but mezcal is not a kind of tequila. While both liquors are from Mexico and are made from the agave plant, tequila is slightly is a slightly fussier spirit. Tequilas are made from at least 51% of Blue Weber agave and are grown in very specific Mexican states. Mezcal can be made from any agave species from anywhere in Mexico. I feel like there's a little bit more nuance there, which uh, I, I got from a book from, I think Robert Simonson wrote the book Mezcal and Tequila Cocktails, and he did a whole stream on it so far, and hopefully I'll go back to it again, because Mezcal and Tequila are two underappreciated spirits in my collection. I want to be able to do more with them. Another good one. Love that. That one, that one felt easy. And on to the next one. Next drink. I keep wanting to say drink. My mouth is just, my mouth is speaking faster than my brain is. Numero uno type is drinks. Looks like maybe we'll get the drinks that we wanted after all. The cable car mixed drink recipe originated in what city? Toronto, Singapore, London, or San Francisco? San Francisco, San Francisco. That is exactly what that word says at the bottom. Nobody can tell you otherwise. I have literally no idea. Cable car. What place do I think has cable cars? I've never seen a cable car. So I'm just gonna say it wasn't San Francisco. London. I've never been to London, nor Singapore, nor Toronto. Also, is Singapore a country? I know London and Toronto were a city, but I thought Singapore was a country. Maybe I was wrong about that. Maybe that's the red herring there. Toronto? Toronto sounds cool. I like Canada. I'm gonna say Toronto. San Francisco. All right, I destroyed myself from the very beginning. Coat the rim of martini glass with a blend of sugar and cinnamon. Combine one cup of ice, five tablespoons of spiced rum, three tablespoons of orange curacao, a quarter of a cup of fresh lemon juice, and two tablespoons of sugar syrup. Shake until the mixed drink shaker becomes icy. Strain and garnish with orange slices. Interesting. And what was that called again? A cable car. I've never heard of that one before. Let's see. Do I have... I got cinnamon. I've got spiced rum. I got ice. Orange curacao. Well, I don't have orange curacao. I have I have an orange liqueur that can be used kind of in place of orange curacao. And um, sugar syrup. Oh, actually, do I have any more syrup syrup? I don't know if I do. Wait a minute. I think I used all of it. I've only got honey syrup left. Oh, right. Oh, wait, what's that in the back? Oh, it's orange. Okay. Nope. I don't have any sugar syrup. I got the honey syrup though. It wouldn't be the same though. I think I'll add that to my collection though. I'm gonna put that off. The, so I didn't get that right, but I will put that off to the side as a cocktail that I add later on. What is that called? Cable car? Cable car. Cable car. From San Francisco. I didn't know that one. And that's 10 incorrect answers so far for me. I would, I'll say prior to the stream beginning, I didn't know exactly how this was gonna go. Maybe I was gonna prove myself wrong. Or maybe I was going to prove myself right. What did I think I was doing? I don't know. Lingo. Yet another lingo question. Oh my god, I just flipped over to the answer. Okay, <laughs> that one doesn't count. There we go. I saw that the answer was false. I don't know what the question was. I'm actually getting a little, you know, a little hot under the collar over here. Oh man. Which of these liqueur liqueurs might be served with three flies in Rome? What are the options? Put them up against the camera cam. Vermouth, vodka, tequila, or sambuca flies in Rome? Well, I feel like... Maybe not vodka or tequila. I, I feel like it's between sambuca and vermouth. Vermouth, I feel like, would make its appearance in Rome, in Italy. I don't know about sambuca. I have a tiny little bottle of sambuca. And I'm going to take a little look at it. This is a Ramona Sambuca. And Ramona, the front of this actually has the Colosseum on it. Lecora Classico. And it has absolutely nothing on it. Imported by Sazerac in Louisville. Which of these would be served with three flies in Rome? Flies? I mean, Ramona? Rome? Rome Sambuca? I'm gonna say Sambuca. That's gonna be my vote. 
because I see Rome on the Sambuca. Sambuca, woo! But please tell me why I'm correct. I need to know. Sambuca con mosca is straight up Sambuca, served with three espresso beans known as flies, which stand for health, wealth, and happiness. Drinking the star anise infused alcohol and chewing the beans acts as a palate cleanser, mainly flavored with star anise. Sambuca can also include Sambuca flowers, elderberries, and lemon. So it's actually, when I think about it, I actually had, I bought this tiny little bottle of Sambuca when I was at the liquor store because not a lot of cocktails I use call for Sambuca, but I wanted the opportunity to use it. So actually I want to take this as an opportunity to get a little taste on it because I haven't had Sambuca in a hot minute and I don't exactly remember what it tastes like. I'm going to try it and see how that goes. Definitely smells like star anise. Very, very licorice-y, fennel -y, anise -y. All those flavors kind of get mixed up in my mind, and I can't quite parse the three of them um, out of each other yet. Maybe one day. Smells like licorice. It also kind of smells like absinthe as well. Oh yeah. It's very, very licorice. -y. It's like it's like taking a bite of black licorice. That's Ramona Sambuca. It is sweet. It is licorice-y. And these see in this case are really pleasant actually. It's got a nice, it's got a nice burn to it. And my mouth, my tongue, does feel very cleansed after it. In the way that like the flavor that's left behind still tastes very licorice-y, but like the feeling on my tongue feels like I don't know that I could have something else. I wonder if I chase my the rest of my red apple martini with the duration of the Sambuca. Nice. Also nice. Hmm. Doesn't go entirely bad together. Not bad. Hmm. Hmm. I actually tasted really good. Here's a suggestion. Ramona Sambuca in your red apple martini. Tastes pretty good. Not too bad at all. And I actually, <laughs> I, I, it's not very often that I actually finish a drink on stream. That red apple martini was, that was really good. I really, really like that. So, so much to the point where I finish it. Then again, for the most part, most of the times when we do this cocktail show, it's cocktail after cocktail after cocktail after cocktail. And uh, honestly, we haven't, like, we've only had um, three cocktails this time around. We made a red apple martini. We made a French connection. And uh, I made myself a sort of weird modified Negroni that's got a little bit of Luxardo Maraschino in it, because why not? All right, we'll move on. It seems like, it seems like, again, I'm at the point where I'm either going to reach the three hour mark first, or we're going to make, make another drink. And that'll be where I end it afterwards. Because uh, apparently th there's, a, there's a lot more to this trivia box than I thought there was. And again, so for those of you who are interested, the... The box that I'm pulling from here, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. And honestly, it, it was a thrift store find, so I figured I'd pick it up. It's from this Mixed Drink Smarts Get in the Mix question and answer card that make learning about mixed drinks easy and fun. Now, to be fair, I think that this show is kind of fun too. Maybe not easy. I don't think this show is very easy, all things considered. I take sometimes up to 40 minutes to make a single drink. And uh, if anybody values their time, maybe you just go to a real bar. What are you talking about? This is a real bar. I rolled a one. So we're gonna go for another drinks thing. Oh, I got that answer correct. Did I mark that properly? I think I did. I don't know, now I have to recount. So far, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16, wow, I complete, wait, really? Wait a minute. I've missed a couple of these. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, six. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Wow, I completely miscounted half these. Huh. I should be at 16 now. How many losses do I have now? Wait a minute. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I've been counting my losses correctly, but apparently not my wins. Man, I've been so down on myself. Um, did I roll a one? 
I don't recall anymore, honestly. Looks like they have a beer one of this game, Cam. They have another one? Dude. This is gonna be fun. Dude, I imagine this could be fun. We could have a bunch of people on. We can all do cocktail trivia with each other. Three, it's a lingo one. Dude, I, you know, I'd be happy to get another one of these boxes in the mail, you know? That'd be cool. Or just find one, you know, at like Target or something. True or false, the VS on a cognac label means very special. It does, because we literally looked that up right during the stream. It means very special, and it means, and it means, specifically, if you see VS on your cognac, that means that it, if it is a blended cognac, the age of the youngest cognac in the blend is at minimum two years. So the answer is true. The S on a cognac label can mean special or superior. Vsop translates to very special old pale, and Vivisop is very, very superior old pale. The increasing vary is a sign of just how good this stuff is, apparently. Cognac is a French brandy made from various grapes and is smooth, warming, and makes you feel like the lord of the manor as you imperiously swirl it around in your glass. Speaking of which, I still have this French connection. And I don't really feel very superior swirling around, mostly because I think it's going to fall out of the glass, but... It's still very tasty. It's a little, it's a little less pronounced on the sweetness now, but it kind of tastes like a, like a, a slightly tart, slightly bitter caramel apple. That's tasty. And that was the French Connection cocktail. So we did it. Yeah! Awesome. That's number 17 apparently now. Good job, Cam. Sometimes it's just good to give yourself a pat on the back. Good job, Cam. Good job, everybody, too. We also had a couple of participants from Bloated Rats, Bloated Dead Rats, and Plebstash. Congrats, y'all. You are at 100% so far. You're doing a lot. Much, much better than I am. But I can get closer to 100% if I keep answering more questions. So, alas, here we go. Roll the dice. Section one. Drinks. Yes or no? Is it possible to mix liqueurs in a B-52 shooter? A B-52 shooter is a shot, I think. Is it possible to mix liqueurs? I want to say a B-52 shooter is a layer shot. So, yeah. I mean, like, okay, is it possible to? Yes. If it's a layered shot, are you going to? No. I mean, like, it all gets mixed in your belly anyways after the fact, so it's probably a yes. But this one might be catching us on the technicality. But I'm pretty sure it's a layered shot. What's in the B-52 shooter? I have no idea. Let's see. Yes! Awesome. A B-52 shooter is a three-layered drink served in a two-ounce shooter glass. Pour half an ounce of Kahlua into the shooter glass, then float half an ounce of Irish cream. Pour over the back of the bar spoon, over the Kahlua, then layer a half an ounce of Grand Marnier on top of the Irish cream. So it says, is it possible to mix it? Yeah, apparently. But I guess when they say mix in this case, they mean mix as in put in a mixed drink. In which case, I'm confused. There are too many pieces of this question that I can take in many different directions. And for that, um, I'd want to do a B-52 shooter. However, I don't have any Grand Marnier. To my knowledge, though, actually, I'm going to look it up. So I'm not misquoting it. I've never actually had Grand Marnier before, but according to the Grand uh, source that is the internet, Grand Marnier is a visionary blend of fine cognac and bitter orange flavored liqueur, evidently. And that's according to the Grand Marnier website. One day, I'd like to try some Grand Marnier. The answer is yes, and we are correct. It's also a shot you light on fire. I can't believe that the card didn't tell us that. That feels like really important for information to know, don't you think? Apparently you can catch it on fire. Well, I guess I would wonder what piece of that, hold on a second, what piece of that catches on fire? The Kahlua certainly wouldn't. Neither would the Irish cream. So I guess what what is the proof of Grand Marnier? Grand Marnier proof. If it's like a hundred, then that would make sense. Grand Marnier is 40% alcohol, so about 80 proof. The grandest of Marniers. That makes sense. All right, next question. Roll the dice. I'm getting big good at this. Wild card, it's a four. The Bloody Mary was named in honor of Mary Tyler Moore, Mary Poppins, Queen Mary the First, or the Virgin Mary herself. 
I'm trying to think of the implications that, so, so my mind immediately went to the implications of what made Mary bloody. And like, if I think, I don't know who Mary Tyler Moore is, maybe she was an actor? Mary Poppins is Mary Poppins from like the Disney movie. I don't think the Bloody Mary was named after Mary Poppins, so I'm gonna strike that from the list. Queen Mary the First, I could understand. I don't know much about history, but maybe like Queen Mary the First was like brutally struck down, and that's why they call her the Bloody Mary. Or, or maybe it was the Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary, it, the blood because like I, I think there's blood when you give childbirth, and she like birthed the baby Jesus. I could understand it being either of those. Bless you. So I, I'm gonna think. Queen Mary, somebody sneezed in the hallway. That was the context for that. Um, I'm not familiar with Mary Tyler Moore. Mary Poppins, I don't think it is. I don't know if they would name it Bloody Mary in honor of childbirth, but maybe they would. So I'm gonna go with Queen Mary the first. I'm gonna go process of elimination there. I don't, I don't know much about any of these characters. Although I did, apparently the, the song Tuppence from the Mary Poppins movie always made me cry as a child and still does. And I'm 25. So it happens. So I'm gonna go with C, Queen Mary the First. Queen Mary the First, all right, please tell me why. Invented in 1921 at Harry's New York Bar in Paris by Fernand Piet Pitiot, this brunch favorite is reputedly named for Catholic Queen Mary Tudor and her relentless and bloody persecution of Protestants. Ouch. It's made with an eye-opening mix of vodka, tomato juice, lemon juice, Worcestershire sauce, Tabasco sauce, celery salt, black pepper, salt, horseradish, and garnished with celery. There are so many ways to make various different bloody drinks, and at some point I am planning on doing a bloody stream because... You know, bloody stream like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. No, just kidding. A bloody drink stream because honestly, I've never had a really good Bloody Mary that I enjoyed. And I'd like to figure out what my favorite recipe would be if I had to go out and figure one out on our own. Doing good so far. How are we looking on time? Getting to 250 mark. Maybe we get another drink before the end. Two. Ingredients. Another question. This one looks like it might be a drink, maybe. What can you use to darken up your orange margarita? Could you use A, sarsaparilla, B, blood oranges, C, pomegranate, or D, cranberry juice? I would think in your margarita, your margarita is going to be made with like tequila and lime juice and agave syrup and a bunch. There's so many different ways the margarita as well. However, if you were going to darken it up, a blood orange has a dark red color. And I suppose you could add some orange citrus in there. It's not that different from the lime, I guess. It would add a different flavor component. But I know that pomegranate and blood oranges are both dark, but there is no pomegranate by nature in a margarita, unless you make it like a pomegranate margarita. So it would be a technically different drink, I would guess, from this point, standpoint. Same thing with the cranberry juice as well, would be my guess. Sarsaparilla is an interesting one. I would think like, you know, Sarsaparilla itself is like a, like a, I think supposedly people say like the original cola was flavored with sarsaparilla root. I actually have some sassa, sassafras bitters over here from Woodford Reserve. Not that that has anything to do with the conversation we're having there, but I'm going to go with blood orange on that one. It just, it's, it's also citrus. You have citrus already in a margarita. That's my guess. So let's try it. Blood oranges. It only takes about five minutes to create an orange margarita. The recipe consists of two ounces of tequila, one a third ounce of Grand Marnier, again, an ingredient that I don't have, although it's a bitter orange liqueur, so maybe Campari? I don't know. Two thirds of an ounce of fresh orange juice and one third of an ounce of fresh lime juice. Garnish with an orange slice, salt the rim if desired, fill with ice cubes and give it a stir. So it's the blood orange. You just make an orange margarita. But I mean, again, going back to the other side, what if you wanted to make a sarsaparilla margarita or the blood margarita, which is in this case, the orange mar the, what was it? Orange margarita? You called that? You called it an orange margarita, despite the fact that it might be a red in color. Pomegranate margarita. You can put pomegranate juice in there. I got this cool pomegranate. Actually, a f uh, buddy of mine gifted me a pomegranate spirit for, I think it was my birthday. It's this pama liqueur. It is made with blue agave tequila, which is a bit of a, um, it's a, it's a bit redundant there. And I guess you could do a cranberry margarita too. Sarsaparilla, I believe, is associated with root beer. I believe you're also correct there, Jasper. Indeed. I think the story goes something along the lines of sarsaparilla root. 
Sarsaparilla itself was not actually flavored with sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla and what later became like the modern day cola was actually flavored with sassafras root. So sassafras root is what flavors sarsaparilla. There is also such a thing as sarsaparilla root, but sarsaparilla root was named after the creation of sarsaparilla. Maybe. I, I, I could be wrong on that. I'm not an expert in the field. Actually, actually, I know what is an expert in the field. I have a book on that specifically. And I'm actually very curious about it. Let's see, I have a drunken bot- I have a book called The Drunken Botanist over here that probably has information on sarsaparilla. And I'm just gonna straight up read it because I'm curious enough and I know I have the resource on it. There's a book called The Drunken Botanist. It was a recommendation for somebody and I'm very glad that I have it. And I'm gonna try to see if I can find sarsaparilla in here to give me an explanation of something. Whatever we were just talking about. Index says that sarsaparilla is on page S. Sir, thar, thar, sassafras, sarsaparilla, 191. Let's see what we can find. 191, 191. There we go. So sarsaparilla, many people, I'll just read the passage out of the book so we can all learn a little thing. Sarsaparilla, or Smilix regeli, Smilix Smilacaceae in the Greenbrier family. Many people know sarsaparilla as an old time soda similar to root beer. In fact, the drink called sarsaparilla was made with sassafras, birch bark, and other flavors, but no actual sarsaparilla. The climbing thorny vine that really is sarsaparilla has been used as traditional medicine in its native Central America, in its native Central America, and was even championed once as a cure for syphilis. It also has played a key role in the development of birth control pills. In 1938, a chemist named Russell Marker discovered that a plant steroid derived from sarsaparilla could be chemically altered to make progesterone. I think that's all we need to read on that. For the purposes of our education, for the distinction between sassafras, sarsaparilla, and modern Nicola, I think the drunken botanist has given us a very good answer to our question there. I would totally recommend this book. I got this for Christmas and bookmarked a shit ton of pages in it. Pretty much any botanical that you can think of that goes into like a liqueur or some botanical like bitters and stuff like that might have a page in this book. Even things like, I've been able to find things such as the um, the one bean, I think it's like a tauntaun, a, a to tonka, be tonka beans are in here I think. Um, I have a book on mastic, violet, other things, aloe as well. It's a, good, it's a really, really good book, especially those who are a little more interested in the more botanical aspects of your cocktails and like what plants they actually came from. In any case, we'll continue onwards. I think we have time for one to two more questions. One to two more trivia answers. This one is ingredients. Oh, I didn't see that one. I promise I didn't. A kumquat ginger caipirinha is a variation of A. Brazil's national cachaça cocktail B. An herbal tea from Britain C. A rum drink mixed, a rum mixed drink from Jamaica or D. A spiced brandy from Spain It is Brazil's national cachaça cocktail Cachaça is awesome because that's what a caipirinha is Indeed it is A caipirinha Cachaça or pinga or caninha is a distilled alcoholic beverage from Brazil the drink is prepared by smashing sugar and fruit together and adding the cachaça liqueur. Recipe is 5 centiliters of cachaça, half a lime cut into 4 wedges, and 2 teaspoons of brown sugar. A variety of fresh fruits can be used to substitute for the lime. Cachaça is awesome. It is a very, very, very excellent liqueur, um, or li not liqueur, spirit. And I'm actually going to grab one right now because I am so intrigued. And I do have some limes here. So we are totally prepared to make a very quick caipirinha as the last drink of the evening. The cachaça that I have is this Leblon. It's awesome. Dude, this legitimately smells like super ripe bananas. Oh my God, I love the way this smells. The first time that I used this was to create a drink for uh, Super Mario, the Super Mario Brothers. Actually, the Mario, Brother, the Mario movie is coming out uh, today it came out today apparently so I'll share this little recipe for you that I that I created uh, on my own it's called the caipirana plants and it is a riff on a caipirinha to make it a little more orange and with a little garnish um, for um, the, for the little piranha plant that sticks out of it it's very it's very very tasty and it, it, it's good it was my first experience with using a um, with using cachaca 
To create your Kaipurana plant, use one ounce of cachaça or 30 milliliters, one ounce or 30 milliliters of pear brandy, a quarter of an ounce of blue curacao, and a quarter of an ounce or seven milliliters of melon liqueur, like a Midori. And um, I'll put up on the camera here just real quick as well. There's a little garnish that you can make with a strawberry and... Ooh, that's not... That's not... There we go. You can make with strawberries and some white chocolate chips. You just take a strawberry, cut it down the middle, add some white chocolate chips on it, and add a little uh, green straw stem, and you'll get a little piranha plant. Very tasty. In any case, let's make ourselves a very, very quick caipirinha. And I'm just going to make it in the glass because I'm getting tired over here, so that's what we'll go with it. But what we need to do is we need to add cachaça, half a lime cut into four wedges, and four teaspoons of brown sugar. I've got some turbinado sugar that I'm going to use for this. And this is what I'll do. I'll grab myself a glass. I will take about, let's see, what is five centiliters? Five centiliters would be 50 milliliters, which would be about two ounces. So first I'm gonna grab a lime. I'm a lime over here. I'm gonna give that bit a bit of a cut. I think I saw, I think I saw a video the other day about the way to like cut wedges out perfectly. Um, I'm gonna throw that out the window because I don't remember what it was. One half of my lime, cut down the middle. I'm gonna cut this into, I don't know if I'm gonna get four pieces out of this, but I'm gonna at least get three. I'll get one side, get the other. Once I cut this up, I'll switch the angle real quick and we can, we can see how everything gels together. Put this in my bucket. Whoops, we're all good. Got my three lime wedges. I'll put these guys away. I also have my cachaça and I need my sugar. Oh, do I have my turbinado sugar up here? Thought I did. Oh, I might not have my turbinado sugar. That's okay. I got Demerara sugar, which is also technically a sugar that is of a brown color. So I'm gonna do that. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our lime wedges. I'll adjust the angle here just a little bit. I'll move that card to the side. I was right about that. We'll take our lime wedges. We'll put them at the bottom of our glass. Again, there might be a better technique to this, but I'm just, I'm just doing it quickly because I want, I want a caipirinha. We're gonna add some sugar on top of it. it. Says to use brown sugar, and in this case, our Demerara sugar is brown. I'll add that on top of it, just to get it a little coated. Or maybe a lot coated. I like sugar. I'm gonna put sugar in there. I want a sweet one. I'll put that back over here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna muddle the sugar together with all of our lime wedges there, so. We're essentially trying to juice the limes like this, but also get the sugar a chance to finagle with the peels of the limes as well to give a little more of a bitter, almost uh, pithy component to it with the addition of the lime juice that comes out the other side, which is sweetened with the sugar that you use. Again, you it says to use brown sugar. You can use any brown sugar, I guess, or regular sugar, whatever sugar you got. Whatever sugar you have is the right sugar to use. And now what we'll do is now that we've muddled everything up, I'll adjust the angle a little bit so that we can complete the rest of the drink, shall we? That seems like a, whoops, proper angle. Sorry for my f absolute hand there. There we go. Now we'll add about 50, 50 milliliters or five centiliters or about two ounces of our cachaça which for me is the top of this metric jigger, the big side. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know whether or not we need to like stir that or anything, so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda shh. I'm just gonna kinda mix that around as best as I can. Again, the, the card itself here does not provide the instructions for the best way to make this drink. And because I don't know if the Discord bot is working, I will take a picture of this. Post it. There we go. Very cool. A quick, a quick caipirinha is what I'm calling it there. A quick, quick caipirinha. Caip... Caip... Uh, how do I spell that? Caipirinha. Oh wow, it doesn't say it on the side of the card. Kai Pirinha. Kai Pirinha. There we go. 
Okie dokie. How does it taste, though? How does it taste? So this is a Caipirinha, Brazil's national cachaça cocktail. At some point, another idea that I had for a cocktail stream is to just do a bunch of like national cocktails from various different countries. I think it'd be a cool exploration. It would require a little bit more prep on my part. So what this thing smells like is exactly what the cachaça smells like. Like a very, very ripe banana with a hint of citrus to it because the, we crushed the lime, the limes and made put lime juice in there. It's a very, very, it's a very, very potent smelling drink that smells like almost like, again, almost like you mushed up a bunch of bananas and put them into a container and left them there for a little bit and then came back to it a while later. Or, or it's very akin to the smell of if you take a banana and you put it in the freezer and it gets all brown and then you let that completely defrost. It smells like that. Anna makes a lot of muffins, and so she has a pumpkin muffin recipe, and she also has a banana muffin recipe, and what she'll do is she'll take the bananas, which put it in the freezer, let it get all nice and hard, let it defrost afterwards, and then she'll take the thing and she'll put it into the banana muffins, and it's just absolutely delightful. Hmm. Ooh, this is a sour. Is like a bitter sour component there that hits me right away, but it's a very, it's a very. Um, I think I probably need to add more sugar to this. It's funky, as a lot of as a, a lot of other mixologists I know will describe that some rums have a very funky component to it. I would say that for all intents and purposes, the cachaça in this case also falls out of that category of a very funky flavored spirit. And I, some some people would describe the funk as not super dupe not not specifically banana but this is a banana funk to me and like i, I don't think that i've had as much experience to describe other types of funk other than a banana funk but i definitely get that from at least the blonde cachaça in this case in a well-made caipirinha a little too sour for my taste though i need to add more sugar next time around all i'll also know too that all of the sugar that i put in here has completely dissolved so you can adjust you can add sugar and adjust to whatever your tastes are Yeah, it's a little too lime forward for me. I feel like if I was going to do this again, I'd add some simple syrup to it to make it a little more akin to my taste. But all things considered, for the national drink of Brazil, it's not something that you would put down right away. Unless you unless you have acid reflux and the lime juice would do bad on your system. Um, like like some people I know. In any case, so we're about at the three hour mark now, and I think that concludes Mixed drink, smarts, trivia. Essentially, while we did this stream was we went through this box of mixed drink trivia cards and uh, tried to see if we find a couple of drinks along the way, which apparently we have. We created, uh, in total, a red apple martini, which combines whiskey and sour apple or regular apple schnapps together with red cranberry juice to create a red-looking martini that tastes quite really, literally like a red delicious apple. I would show you it but I drank it all already, so sorry about that. I've got a picture in the Discord, and I will be posting recipes and whatnot afterwards on the YouTube channel, as well as the Discord server as well, where I've got a little cocktail blog going there where I'll post more thoughts about the drink itself in a more, a more comprehensive and more human-readable form than a three-hour-long stream. Uh, we also made a French Connection cocktail, which is over here, which is, in various different ratios, a combination of amaretto and cognac together. There are other forms of this drink that take place, such as the Godmother, which is vodka and amaretto, a Godfather, which is scotch whiskey and amaretto, and a Godchild, which is cream or cream liqueur and amaretto. All seem like wonderful combinations. I wanted to use cognac, so that's what I went for when I made the French Connection here. We also created, I forget, I remembered in the very beginning, I made a Billivardier, just because it's one of, the, one of my favorite drinks. I made it with a Larceny bourbon, which is very corn forward, so it's a very corny flavored Boulevardier if you're familiar with that. That's made with your choice of whiskey or bourbon combined with sweet vermouth and Campari, the bitter orange liqueur. And the last thing we made was this Caipirinha, very, very quickly. There's probably a better way of doing it, but we put two ounces or 60 milliliters of cachaça into a glass that had lime wedges muddled with your favorite type of dark colored sugar. Uh, mine should be a little more sweet. I would probably add some more simple syrup to it for my taste, but it is the national drink of Brazil. And I'll leave you with that.
because that feels like an important information. And the final score of everything for everyone who decided to participate in the quizzical time, which I'm glad I wasn't doing it alone, is bloated. Bloated Dead Rats and the Otter Couple coming in with a 100% correct ratio with two correct answers. We also have Plebstash who popped in here for, a, for just like the, like the, what was that one movie about the bowling game? Like the Big Lebowski or something? He only got one shot and he took it and he was correct. Also 100%. And then there was me answering every single question possible, ending at a grand total of apparently 20 correct answers and 10 incorrect answers. So I was like, out of 30, 10 of those were wrong. So I got a 66 on this test. So evidently, I am, um, I'll take that. I didn't specifically fail, I didn't fail. D, 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 D is the grade that I would give myself on these particular cocktail trials. There's so, there's actually a lot more cards left here. There's basically the entire pile left of the ingredients section. We still have a lot of the wild cards and lingo and stuff. There is a stack of cards that is, I'm gonna put them all back together. This is my face, this is a comparison of my face. This large, that I wasn't able to get to yet, like a very, very large collection here. Oh, here's the, just really the cocktail angle. There are a lot of cards left. This, this, this particular box here contains a lot of different things, and it's, it's honestly kind of cool to be able to go through and find a couple of recipes along the way, learn something new, kind of reinforce the knowledge that we already had. It was fun. I very much enjoyed myself, and I'm glad that we were able to do so and learn something new along the way. So to everybody out there, no matter where you are, I thank you very much for coming along, and that's pretty much all I've got for this evening. I just realized that the lavalier microphone is not yet set up with the end screen, so please allow me to take my other microphone over here. It's the first time I'm using the lavalier. Or Lavalier, whatever it is. I hope everyone can hear me now. In any case, this is the end of my bar stream this week at the bar with an X. Thank you all so much for joining me for trivia. Next week, I'll give a little bit of a teaser. We're going to be discussing the concept of the egg, the egg in your cocktail. I will be joined by our beautiful community member, Imi Chow, as we explore eggs in your cocktails, specifically egg whites, egg yolks, and uh, it'll be fun. And I'll see you all next Wednesday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as always, every single week. Please, please, come back again. Or if not, and you are just merely passing through the bar, thank you so much for coming along, and it's been a pleasure to be your bartender this evening. To everybody out there, if it's the night where you are, like it is with me over here, may the moon continue to shine on you. You may have a wonderful rest of your night. If the moon is shining, just like I said earlier, it's also night. Perhaps it's the morning where you are. Have a wonderful rest of your morning. Dawn, twilight, or otherwise, the party continues wherever we are. Thank you all very much. And until next time, y'all, cheers. And bye. <laughs>